What's poppin', y'all? Welcome to the Through the Wire NBA draft Live Draft Show. I am Pee Wee the Plug, also known as Pierre. To my left, I got Mike, the Mike Ball. Say what up to the people, Mike. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. We got a lot of talent in this draft, and I'm excited, man. I'm well prepared, too. Hey, my, I got my right, my right hand, man. My hey, righty. Hey, man, I can't even dress ready for the draft party. This is a draft party. There's a uh, lot excuse, of stuff excuse going me. on tonight. Excuse a me. lot of guys going to get paid, get some big checks into their way. And I'm excited to see it. Yes, sir. And also, for the people at home, Derek will be operating the chat. So if you have a question, a comment, or concern, and it doesn't get addressed, you should take that up with D Mills because that's his job for the stream tonight. Um, but like Mike said, we are prepared. We've put a lot of time, work, and effort over the last couple of months to do this. So I think we're going to be well-informed on every single pick, even going into the second round. My first thing while we wait, because we all know, that the draft is going to be a long process. Even when we know the picks, they're going to use the entire clock. Who are some of the guys that y'all are um, intrigued with going into this draft besides the obvious names that we've been hearing for the last few months of Paulo, Chet, and Jabari, Jay and Ivy? Who are some other guys that may go, you know, in the teens, 20s, mm -hmm. that you really, really like that probably isn't the most known guys in these drafts? I'll start with you, Mike. Give me two uh, or three guys. Yep. Uh, first guy is uh, Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I love those t like scores type guys. Mm -hmm. uh, not the fastest, not crazy athletic, but he, he does it with his own type of pace. And yeah. I love how he operates the pick and roll. I think he's going to be able to come out and give a team some boost, just whether it be off the bench or anything like that. I love, there's a lot of juniors and sophomores, yeah. you know, in this draft that I think are going to make impact right off the, you know, right from the start. Derek, you give me one of your three. Uh, I think when you got a 6'11 guard like Nikola Jovic, I think his ceiling is very high. The vision is phenomenal. Same guy you call the center, right? Well, here's the here, <laughs> let me correct that. Okay. Uh, being 6'11, I feel like eventually you can add some versatility to the lineup, and sometimes down the stretch of games, he can maybe close out the game for you at five. I'm not saying he is a five. He is definitely a very skilled basketball player who deserves to be playing on a perimeter. But if he can do some other things on the court, let's do it. What are some things that you guys dislike about both of the guys you just named? Uh, for me, defensively, I know Nikola Jovic is a very much a liability. He doesn't bring much on that side of the ball. But I feel like in the NBA, maybe they can hide it. There's, teams always find a way to hide their bad defenders. So in his position, he will probably be able to get away with it. Uh, for my guy, it's basically just can he do the same thing he did in college at that next level with better defenses around him? And, you know, he doesn't have the quickest first step and everything like that. Uh, when you have a player like that, they have to find their own way in the NBA and find, how, you know, their nicks and crafts on how to get to the basket and score. Uh, one of the guys for me that I'm intrigued with, I got a lot of guys that I really like in this this class, uh, but Jaden Hardy, just because of the simple fact Jaden Hardy took the G League route, which has been intriguing over the last couple of years. But coming into this year, he was one of the top three names coming into this class that a lot of people thought was a surefire five uh, top five pick. Mm -hmm. So to now see him in some mocks uh, be in the like 19, the 20s, low 20s, um, it's interesting to me. It's mm -hmm. interesting to me. I think he had a really good year at the G League, definitely started off slow. It's definitely a different jump from high school basketball to skipping college and playing with professionals. Mm -hmm. um, didn't think the G League roster was the best as far as spacing and, and open up the floor for a guy with his type of skill set. But I definitely think that he still has extreme upside, still very young. And then towards the middle um, end of the year, once he started to get a feel for the game, I think his playmaking uh, stood out for me in a pick and roll. And then his scoring mm -hmm. is always going to be something that's going to give him a chance to yeah, be on the floor. That That's super big for me. Just like, it's hard when a player struggles at the beginning of the season, but I love hearing the stories when they can turn it around because mm -hmm. that means they adapt. Uh, yeah, that means they adapt, and that goes on to one of the other dudes I like is Osman Jang. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, he struggled to starting off, and part of it was because he's playing with in a different league. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, he had to work on his body, which you know was uh, already something he's going to need to work on when it comes to the NBA. But I love the frame. You know, at, at that type of size, he's got a, a lot of skill set. He's smooth with it too. Mm -hmm. So you know, those type of guys I love seeing. Yeah. A guy for me that I just love watching, I found myself watching like 30 minutes of his film, is like E.J. Liddell. E. Liddell. Uh, I feel like E.J. Liddell can bring a lot for a team, especially at that four spot. I know he is 6'7". He can even play the five some nights. Because uh, his defensive versatility just brings so much on the court. He can switch one through five. He shoots the ball well. Um, and he just does a lot of the dirty work that a lot of teams would love to have on a team. 
Yeah, I like I like EJ Liddell a lot. Uh, this is the type of guy Mike was talking about. You know, upperclassman um, that was able to go to school, go back to school for a couple of years, and and refine some of the things uh, that maybe you know were weaknesses in, in early years. And this right here is probably my favorite: the rim protection yes. exercise. Mm-hmm. Um, I had him in my mock going to the Nuggets. Oh, that would, um, that would be perfect. perfect. Yeah, it'd be I, perfect. I, I was just saying that. Uh, you know, the last couple of years they had Paul Millsap, then they went to Jeff Green. I feel like he could be a younger version of kind of both, where he, he can play a poor man's uh, Paul Millsap. You know, a guy that yeah, six seven can play some small ball five, uh, but also not get in the way if he's going to be on the floor where Jokic can uh, you know at times make some outside shots, but then do things like this that we know Jokic you know isn't the best at. He yeah. has grown as a defender, but you know that's still uh, something that he's not the best at. So. Uh, a guy like EJ Liddell makes a lot of sense for a playoff team that wants to have some some versatility and some options. So, and I feel like his energy will be contagious. He plays with a lot of effort and a lot of energy, and his ability to rebound the ball, push. He could do a lot of things on the court for you. Yeah, I like EJ Liddell a lot. It's a guy that y'all uh, y'all Bulls, your Bulls have been uh, tied to. I would not mind EJ Liddell with the Bulls. He would definitely be a great replacement uh, for some nights when Vucevic is being bad. Is I'm he- getting my <laughs> updates right now. Uh, Nick's trade packages. Shout out to our boys, the broadcast boys. I just got my BR update saying the broadcast boys are cooking up options at number 11 for the Knicks to move up. Um, so shout out to the broadcast boys. A lot of y'all know um, this show was supposed to be in New York. We are in Chicago at the Through the Wire studio. I know a lot of y'all probably confused watching. There's been a crazy traveling situation uh, as far as trying to get to New York. Our producer, Anwar, wasn't able to make it. He was on a different flight. We have a flight. Didn't make that. Uh, that got canceled. Uh, and when I say wasn't able to make it, that's what I mean. And Anwar's flight got canceled. Our flight at a later time got canceled. We had another flight. That one got canceled. And then the flights for this morning had 100 25, 135 yeah, with three people. Flights cancel, you know it's gonna be piled up. Yeah. So yeah. that's just to it's clear hard. any confusion for our fans um that were anticipating us being in New York with the broadcast boys, just to sum that up. Um another guy for me that I really like, um, Bryce McGowan's. Bryce McGowan's out of Nebraska, was one of my favorite, you know, uh prospects going to the college year. I thought he was gonna have a much bigger and better year. I didn't take into account him going to Nebraska. Um, I looked at it as an opportunity to be a leader and the best player. But also one of the things about going to those type of schools is that the help and supporting cast around you kind of makes you keyed in on for opposing defenses. And in Big Ten basketball, that's a tough task to handle because you're playing against a lot of pros. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I still think he had a good year. I think he showed some good attributes that are translatable to the NBA, uh, you know, the NBA floor. And I can't wait to see where he goes because to me, He's intriguing, like a lot of these prospects, because his range is all over the place. I've mm-hmm. seen him be in the 20s. I've seen him be in the second round in the 30s. I think I've even seen him in the 40s. Nothing's crazy low in the 40s, early 40s, but just a guy that can have a draft range from anywhere from 22 to 42. Yeah, That's I've seen 20. mostly like the late 20s. Yeah. I've seen him like uh, mid-30s and that type yeah. of stuff. So, But I, I, don't, I think it's just it speaks to, you know, how many wings are in this draft that can really bring in, in uh, you know, those just – I don't know. There's a lot of size in this draft. It is. It's a lot of size in this draft. Another guy that I, I like um, is Dalen Terry. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that he has a lot of tools that kind of like Dyson Daniels kind of brings in terms mm-hmm. of like the versatility, uh, the playmaking, the flashy playmaker kind of reminds me of like an Iguodala, the type yes. of stuff that he does. And, um, you know, I think it's one of those picks you can't really go wrong with. He's going to be good already, and then he's going to develop his offensive game and continue to grow. Yeah, I like Dalen Siri. Now, uh, Iggy was one of the things I wrote down for him. Not a spot on comparison, but mm-hmm. a guy that just does a lot of different things defensively, offensively, can make the pass, loves to play in transition. Um, I feel like what he lacks in shooting, he makes up for with effort and his playmaking ability in the half court. Yeah. I think that's a good mix for him. Yeah. Uh, but another guy for me, uh, John Butler out of Florida State. Uh, I like his quick feet. He's a seven footer who can shoot mm-hmm. the three ball. He's a guy that every. NBA team would dream of having. He could switch, he could block shots, and he mm-hmm. shoots threes. That sounds like a prototypical center that every team in the NBA would love to have. Except he don't play center. He don't play he don't, center. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I think I might weigh more than him, honestly. <laughs> yeah, uh, John Butler is definitely an interesting guy that I think a lot of fan bases mm-hmm. will champion if they are able to draft and select him because he's going to be like a project just because he is thin frame, yeah. seven foot. You very unique. Um, but you know, when he does figure everything out 
yeah, a shooting guard who's seven foot that can block shots. Maybe probably won't ever be big enough to handle uh, guys in the post. But yeah, I love I love his quick feet for his size, and I think that that length is going to be overwhelming, you know, for guys because of how good he can move laterally. So if he's yeah. guarding a six five shooting guard, mm-hmm. even if that six five shooting guard creates space. It's the, seven, the, seven yeah. foot, the long <laughs> arm to try to shoot over. Yeah, so I think John Butler is going to be intriguing. And those are the type of guys that make this draft all over the place because you might have a guy that you really like, but then you may be intrigued with his upside and potential, and you may say, hey, we're just going to take the chance on John Butler with our de- developmental mm-hmm. pick, uh, a developmental team. The first pick is in with the Orlando Magic, and here we are. I know he probably said it on Twitter already. The <laughs> Orlando Magic to start us off tonight. Are going to be selecting. They took Paulo. Paulo Banquero. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. I kept telling people there's no way you don't take Paulo Banquero with the number one pick. The Magic have everything on a roster that an up, up and coming team wants except a go to guy. This dude is a 6'9, 6'10 baby version of Carmelo Anthony. Um, and I was telling y'all, when, when we walked in here, we was eating pizza and different things like that, and he can't kind of popped up on the screen or something. Yep. I said to myself, there is no way that a guy like this just goes third. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So and I, like I think it's beautiful for the Magic. It gives them a concrete guy to build around. I think Paulo has a good playmaking ability. Uh, he's a very capable defender, and he has very good footwork down low. He can play on a perimeter. There's a lot of th- different things that Paulo can bring to the table, mm-hmm. and he's definitely the most NBA-ready prospect right now. Yeah, that size and 250, 250 is just crazy. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like somebody I know. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> no, but this dude has kind of got superstar all written for him. I like how Magic been kind of throwing that curveball and then came out and went out with Pablo. Or Paolo. Yes, yeah. please don't call him Paolo. <laughs> it was kind of a no-brainer for a team that doesn't have a guy that they can like comfortably build around. They mm-hmm. have to go out and get Paolo. That's, that, that was the only thing for me. Now, for me, while we watching this... <laughs> I decided to go on my phone, and I just wanted to look because we we obviously doing a draft show. We're trying to stay surprised or whatnot. Yeah. Um. But just to be sure, I wanted to look and see if there was any of the tweets that says, "Hey, he's going number one or whatever." Um. And there is there is one. Yeah, Shams, there was one. Shams did. Spoil you know, it Shams and Wells be thirsty. Three minutes ago, um, they're not saying anything about number two, so I'm not gonna say. I'm just keep it off. Check the yep. comments because I know we do have some Magic fans that are um. Viewers of the Through the Wire podcast, I want to see the reaction because this is something that was fluctuating all. And I said that in my video, man. For me, I couldn't believe, and I literally said it word for word. It's mind blowing for me to believe that the Magic had made their selection for weeks ahead of the draft with mm-hmm. three guys like this at the top. Because we've been hearing Jabari, 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 Chet, Chet, like for weeks now, weeks. And I'm just sitting in my video like, it's no way that this much talent is there and they've made the decision. We, like, I would have used every second. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm happy to see that, uh, you know, it wasn't as predictable as people were trying to make it. I wish I would have put a bet on it, though, because I kept seeing the odds change for Paulo. Paulo, they're just kind of just yelling Paulo's name. Shout out um, to Paulo, man. Somebody said, are you serious? Are you effing serious? I guess they didn't. <laughs> Maybe. They wanted Jabari. Oh, or maybe they were another fan. Or maybe it's a, like a Rocket fan that was hoping that he oh, failed. Oh, true. <laughs> true, true, true. I kept telling my boy Hottie, who is a Rocket fan, don't get your hopes up, man. Don't get your hopes up. I like it, though, for the Magic, because they, they had so much to build off from last year. They had a lot of good player development. And then, like you said, they get their guy now. Hopefully they get into that mix where they're trying to compete or – Worst things worse. You just see what else you know really works with Paolo. Is he the since he's going to the Magic? Is he like the clear cut favorite to win Rookie of the Year? Uh, I, I never. I don't ever think that Rookie of the Year is that clear cut where just the number one guy just gets it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I do think he is the best overall player in this draft, and he's the most NBA ready. Mm-hmm. So I, I would I would like my chances with Paolo. And, and when you look at the surrounding pieces of the Orlando Magic, they have a lot there to make him that guy yep. from day one. And you know, there's nobody there that could take the ball out of his hands. That's He's gonna him be that guy. There. Yep. Um, <laughs> Franz Wagner, I think, is really, really, really good player. And I think he's a dynamic player that can get you the ball and do a lot of other things. That's what makes him so good. He's not just a scorer. Markel Fultz is an incredible playmaker. Mm -hmm. Uh, You see what he said. He came with me. Uh, (laughs) Wendell Carter is a smart, intelligent player. I think they got good, good, you know, the good right pieces. So I think he's going to be able to come in and and do what he does and learn. And they have a great what coach? Head coach. 
Great play, what, player what, coach, player development developmental coach, coach yep. and Jamal Mosley from the Dallas Mavericks who had a good relationship with Luca. So I can't wait to see him get his hands on Paolo. Because the first thing Mosley did when he got in the office, I remember the, watching the footage of him working out with Mo Bamba um, in the post and making sure he was ready. And Mo Bamba came out and had a very, like, really good. The best year meet. of his career yeah. so far. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So and can't wait to see what he does with Paolo. Um, I'm happy for Magic fans, man. I, I really am because. Uh, I like some other guys in this draft, but I just feel like they would have dropped the ball missing out on a guy that that's probably going to. Be, I, I I probably as long as he's injury free, knock on wood. We you know of course we want everybody to be healthy. This dude is a twenty point scorer in this league for mm-hmm. sure, and he may be it out of the gate. Some guy said that. Wait, where did it go? He said that his floor was Bam and his ceiling was Tatum. Who? I can't remember. I can't find he, whose floor. Uh, Apollo's. I I can't say floor is Bam. Two different. Positions, Alexander, two different players. Mm-hmm. Um, ceiling is Tatum. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna stick with Mello, Carmelo. Yeah, yeah I, can I, see I, it. I like Carmelo or modern Detroit Piston Blake Griffin. I guy. like the Blake Griffin one. Yeah, yeah. I like how they also have like they have a lot of options later in the draft too with their other pick mm-hmm. to get another guy that can complement or space. It. There's a lot of wings or guards that yes. can complement him. And that's and what they've the been. Uh, I think that's their most vacant position, right? The shooting guard position. They got a bunch of guards: mm-hmm. Cole, Markel. Okay, uh, he's about uh, to pick now. Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs. So, yeah. Um, and then they still got some veterans to make some moves. Ter- Terrence Ross would be a hot commodity on Gary the market. Gary, I get he's a free agent. Yes, he is. Um, so, they got some options to make some trades or whatnot. With the second pick of the 2022 draft, I know y'all probably in the comments already know from Twitter. We not looking at Twitter. We going <laughs> to Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren. This is so beautiful. Folks. And um, my... Uh, which what would Pee Wee do, Mock, is looking very accurate so far because I'm assuming and I'm guessing now it could be a curveball. Maybe <laughs> Houston says, Man, let's just go for the dynamic guard and Jane get Ivy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but so far I had Paulo, Chet, and then Jabari going. So far third. you're looking like a draft expert. <laughs> you know, I, I I'm not gonna go out go out my way to say that because I do think these top three were solidified. Mm-hmm. I'll just kinda was just throwing my two cents in. Yep. But uh yeah, Chet, very dynamic. Unicorn-esque. A lot of people talk about the thin frame, but since I've been watching him in high school, where every level he's competed at, the frame has not um, hurt him yet. So I don't think it was, you know, go out of no. You don't become a top three overall pick, and your frame is that much of a weakness for you. You know, you what, know I mean? what I hate seeing? When what people seeing? see centers coming into the league, and they say that they're not ready to guard Joel Embiid and Jokic. Nobody in the NBA is ready to guard Joel Embiid yes. and Jokic. So, of course, it's going to take time. And what mm-hmm. he likks the size, he makes it for one length. And mm-hmm. effort. He's a he plays hard. Yeah, just, just the type of guy where he's gonna come out and he's gonna give you extra efforts and he's gonna make up for it on the other end. I like that, man. Ain't nobody ready to come. They could have <laughs> get who who is somebody who ha, who does have some size? Like, yeah, even if it was a guy who had size, yeah. we wouldn't be coming in saying he's nobody's saying guard. Mark Williams for yeah, the yeah, exactly. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nobody's yeah. ready to guard the top centers in the league. Great mm-hmm. point. And yeah. this is a guy who can play both front court positions. Yeah. Like we see right here in a lot of these highlights, he shared the floor with uh, Drew Timmy, who was pretty much like the center, and he was kind of the power forward. So, mm-hmm. for all we know, should he, they may, they have pick 12, they may take Jalen Duran or Mark Williams too and say, yeah. hey. I we- wouldn't be surprised. And that's how, I, like, I mean, the consensus, the consensus was Chet, but like, okay, it seems like such a good fit for OKC because. Mm-hmm. He, he's such a unicorn and such a funky player, and that seems like what they've been trying to really go for with like players like Shea, Josh Giddy. Um, I like that's why I put him there. Yeah, yeah, I like I like how quick he is for his size. You're gonna be able to run with him, and, and I don't know. He's just a, a he could be a play finisher. He could be yep. a playmaker. We'll see how well he could shoot the ball and stuff like that. But this dude is dynamic. Let's go down the line for a second because mm-hmm. one of the things you just slightly brought up is one of the main points I kept making. Because in both my mocks, he went number two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just saying like uh, the only way he doesn't go to the Thunder is if he goes number one. Um, but you have Josh Giddy, a six eight point guard. Shea is a 6'6 shooting guard, combo guard. You have uh, Alechki Pokoshevsky, who is 7-foot <laughs> wing. You have Darius Baisley, who's like a 6'10 wing, a power forward. Um, and now you have Chet. <laughs> like, they have a bunch of futuristic long. And, and again, I know Poku still has some growth to do. Same with Darius Baisley, and those guys probably won't even start. But it's just the, the, the point you were making was they're going with this futuristic, versatile, long, lengthy mm-hmm. team. That has um, a lot of good pieces. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm interested to see what they do with Lou Dort. He was a guy that was mentioned in some trade packages and stuff. They do have 12. I heard they like Shaden Sharp. They may be a, a team that makes a move to move up at seven or something like that. So the OKC is not done. This will not be the last that we hear from but them. 
Is it going to be enough to where they want to compete, though? I, I think they are reaching that point where even if they don't want to, they're going to have to because mm-hmm. y'all heard me. Y'all heard me say this a bunch of times. I'm like a broken record at this point, but when you accumulate so many picks, the most important thing is development. And what's the most important aspect of development? Opportunity. And yeah, opportunity and plan. So if you have Chet, Baisley, Poku, Giddy, Trey, Man, Shea, um, uh, I'm Lou Dort. Aaron Wiggins, Jeremiah Robinson, Earl. Yeah. you got all of these guys who have shown promise and deserve playing time, but you can't play a 15 man lineup. Right. So at some point you're going to have to start, you know, Making looking trades. to compete. Yeah. Cause now if you go in the lottery again, shit, you got Giddy, Shay, uh, <laughs> Chet, what the, what the hell is It don't seem to like do? the Thunder mad at it though. They seem like they'll keep drafting forever. It looks like they cool with like not it, competing for a championship, just doing the arms race type of thing. Every offseason since they've had Shea, his name has been mentioned in something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that it's just like, it's only so long a guy going to keep only playing 46 games with an ankle injury because y'all want to tank. Like, I, I'm not saying he's just demanding winning. Yeah. But, man, you don't think he want to make an all-star team? I mean, maybe and the they, all-NBA. And they've been pretty good to start the season. For yes, they the are time. very yeah. competitive. They, yeah. yeah. And they, I think they're only going to get more competitive because he's going to be the back-end anchor of their defense now. Yep. So, Which they liked last season. We got Jabari Smith Jr. on the phone right now as the Rockets are on the clock. He's smiling, so it makes me believe that they're going to select him with the third overall pick. Hey, um, I'll be smiling, too. I'm trying to stay off of my phone. Just because you want the element of surprise. Element of surprise. Yeah. I think us being surprised and 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 being um, a little bit, you know, not knowing what's going on. It's it's only more entertaining for the people watching the stream. Shout out to everybody in the stream. Checking them them uh, tweet or the comments because I know we have some Thunder fan and we got some Chet fans. Let's see. see how everybody feeling. Y'all grade that pick. Let me know how y'all grade that pick. I, I just don't. This could be the only reason why the Magic did all that stuff, saying that they were going to get Jabari Smith just so they could literally throw a curveball for the. But it don't even make that much sense because yeah, the it's just like the first. Yeah, it's that, just yeah. the top three picks. DJ Two Down said, "I think Chet is a great value." Kristaps Porzingis. I'm not mad at that. I've I've seen the Kristaps Porzingis since Chet yep. was uh, in high school. I don't know if he shoots it as well as Porzingis, yeah. and I think he may play with contact a little better. Not that Chet is just. The most aggressive play ever. But Chris Stapps is literally a guy who's going to fade, do fade jump shots before he turns his shoulder and try to get to the rim. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I'm not mad at that comparison at all. Uh, somebody was in Chet and Duran. They probably going to get both of them. I wouldn't be mad at that. Yeah. Chet that lineup's so gym. big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Cause, uh, but they so futuristic. I'll throw another one out there for you, Mike. Usman Jiang at 12. Oh, I can see that though. <laughs> He's one of those dudes I can see like he could damn near go like top nine or some shit, or yeah. he could fall to maybe like twenty or something like With that. With the third pick, the Houston Rockets are going to select in 2022 Jabari Smith Jr. The tear come Let's down go. high. Yeah, it's probably a lot of anxiousness for him just because <laughs> his name was mentioned at every single pick. Mm-hmm. I think Paulo. Was like he should go three, but a lot of people was like, "Oh man, he probably." I mean, no, he should go one, but a lot of people was assuming three. I didn't really hear him too linked up to. And there's his dad, Derek. That I was telling him, but oh, he okay. wasn't too much linked to OKC. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, here's Jabari, a guy that was linked to all three teams. A guy that I'm, I'm I, yo, I'm gonna always say this forever. At the beginning of the college basketball season, during preseason, um, I always do my top guys entering the year or whatever, and I, I said in my video. Jabari Smith Jr. is not that he slept on, but when it comes to the top pick, nobody's mentioning him, and I think he's going to make a case to be up there with Paolo and Chet, and then the season progressed, and boom, he entered the top three with Paolo and Chet. So that's one of my best predictions that I'm going to hold on to (laughs) for my scout and resume (laughs) when uh, the Spurs, the Bulls, Lakers, Knicks, whenever one of these guys, let me not say Lakers because y'all don't ever use y'all picks, but one of these teams that needs a a draft scout or somebody to come in and help them out as a consultant, this is going to be one of my best best pieces of work right here. Jabari Smith definitely entered that that tier Mm -hmm. really, really quickly. When you're Um, that big and can defend on the perimeter the way he can and shoot the ball as well, He's just a dream stretch forward that every team would want. For sure. Like, yeah. it's none, like that's everything, everything. Everything a team would need. Shoot the ball and play defense. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the Rockets probably didn't know what was going to happen, mm-hmm. depending on what the picks 
yeah. we're gonna be, but they gotta be happy, man. Like he's gonna be the dude that can complement what they already have, you know, for like players like Jalen Green. Yes. Now it's Jabari Smith that they, you know, yes. that uh the opposing team has to close out and, and worry about shooting the ball. I'm happy that they didn't throw us a curveball and go after Jay Ivey. You already got a backcourt full of guards. Go get a they only got they really only got two, and I'm not sure if Kevin Porter Jr. has sold me as their point guard. So yeah, and is. I mean my my thing, my argument with that is I don't think Jay Ivey is a point guard either. Yeah. But you know, Houston is in a spot where they just need some talent, if we just being honest. They really just like talent. But I like I like what Mike said. That was my point. Um, when I talked about it, you know, just being able to get a guy that can space the floor for a uh, Jalen Green because of who he is as a driver, open up the floor. That's a deadly pick and pop uh, duo. And hopefully he can open up some playmaking opportunities for Jalen Green because I think that's the next step for him to be uh, dynamic. Because um, yeah. their backcourt is pretty much two dudes that's just trying to get buckets. How do y'all feel about the people who say j- this is a high pick for Jabari who really just does the threes? I think because, you know, th- when you do live by the three, you die by it. And, He's not a shot creator. Yeah. Um, he's not exposing a mismatch in the in you know in the interior. He's not like he's a five. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about having a three and D stretch four as your number three pick? I feel like it gives you like a he's gonna be a very good quality role player or like maybe borderline all star type player throughout his career. Mm-hmm. Um so I think there's value in that, and you go out and you build around him. Well, you're not building around him. Mm-hmm. You just get the right pieces that kind of complement him. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say the same thing. I, I think there's uh, a lot of value in the guys that, you know, end all, be all. Maybe he's your top third or yeah. fourth best player in your team, and he could be average damn near 15 plus or tw- close to 20. But I, there's just so many teams that would love a dude that's around his size that can shoot the ball well. Yes. You know, it's just what he brings. A lot of teams will pay, you know, $80 million for it, you know? Yeah, yeah. especially when you can get a rim-protecting center behind him and all the other guards. It's, you you can have a very good defensive uh, front court with him at your four, and you got a rim protecting five. You're really good right there. Yeah, well, right now they rim, they rim, yeah, they don't have a rim protection. Gun, so, you know, we're going to see. Now, to, I don't want to speed up because we gave every prospect, you know, a proper time or whatever to talk about him. But it's, it's hard to ignore that the team that's on the clock right now is the Sacramento Kings. There's been so much buzz and speculation, especially with my team. Mm-hmm. Jaden Ivey has indirectly but directly expressed the disinterest or lack of interest, I'm sorry, of playing for Sacramento. I don't think nobody is mad at him for that. So I'm very, 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 very curious as to what's about to happen. If I know one thing is that the Sacramento Kings is unpredictable. <laughs> um, so I would not be surprised if they still came out here and drafted Jay Nive, even though he's expressed. I Let don't me be ask here. you that. What? As a GM, this question is for you too. What's your thought on that real quick? Because the pick is in. Would I wouldn't take, do it. You I wouldn't would take a guy take that I want to? Okay, I no. wouldn't either. Okay. It, it has an immediate issue to the locker room. Fourth overall pick, the Sacramento Kings are selecting – Jaden Ivey. Is no, it, is that Keegan Murray? Keegan, Keegan Murray. Murray. Keegan Murray. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Boom, I'm 4 they for 4. Right <laughs> I'm 4 for 4. I think that's the right pick. I think that's, that's the right pick. pick. Y'all talk because I got to get my tweet off. I am 4 for 4. <laughs> I love it. I love it just because the way he scores the ball. Um, when you have De'Aaron Fox who, you know, he wants to get into the paint. Dude could shoot the ball really well. Sabonis, so who's a good, really, uh, a super good passer for his position. This dude cuts super well. This dude just like moves without the ball. Like he damn near, like you would think he belong in a warrior system the way he cuts and moves without hey, the ball. Hey, high fives, high fives around. Oh, yeah. I know Mike is doing this thing. It was getting to a scout <laughs> bag, um, and I love it because my boy, both of y'all put in so much work. So proud of y'all. I think we're going to have a great draft show. But I am just so excited for the Sacramento Kings and their fan base because a lot of people have felt attacked when we've talked about them, and I've definitely held them accountable. It's what I'm supposed to do. But this is the type of shit I'm talking about, Sacramento. This is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I love what Derek said. You do not draft a guy who does not want to go to your team. Instead, they went out and got a, a guy that I think they've always lacked for the past few years, which is versatility. This like this guy, like Mike said, Mike said everything perfectly he does everything he moves without the basketball scores with the basketball he defends he could do three he could do four he could push the ball off the break he could play with the Aaron Fox which is seems to be a high priority for them mm-hmm. and I think he could play with Sabonis because like you said with the cutting um he could post Look up post, that's yeah. like he easy, does he everything does so it's just that's that it's not money. explosive like Jaden Ivey so mm-hmm. people gravitate to that and then I don't care about all the age shit you either can hoop or you can't mm-hmm. and I just feel like they've always 
Besides last year, because they took Davion Mitchell, they've always kind of been unpredictable, or yeah. they tried to go for a big sexy thing. But this is it. And honestly, like the way he's scoring right now, it's real life game type scenarios. Yes. It's not every time where you see a guy and he gets the opportunity to the ISO and everything. This is hey, I'm flashing. Give me the ball. I'm giving the cut. I'm doing all these things, and you can see that happening in real life time. Keegan Murray is a fundamentally skilled, high IQ basketball player. Yeah, and that's something the Sacramento Kings need. Yes, they're they're bringing that into a system that they haven't had in a long time. So I love that. Yeah, I do too. And I I don't know if y'all remember, but last year I was so big on them trying to land Franz Wagner mm-hmm. because I felt he was the same. Wait, not the sexiest guy, not the sexiest name, but he's skillful. He plays without the basketball, and he plays with a high IQ. Those are all of the things uh, Keegan Murray got. My only regret, my only regret is that they kept the guy who they started off with that fit that role to me, which is Tyrese Halliburton. Mm-hmm. He was high IQ, could play with or without the basketball, yep. very smart and skilled and high IQ. I think if they had a in a dream world where I'm the GM, we are. We have a team where it's <laughs> Halliburton, Franz Wagner, and now Keegan Murray. Unfortunately, that's not so the reality. Fox, so but Fox would have been out already. You yeah, I would have traded, traded Fox. Fox. <laughs> yeah, I would have traded Fox. Yeah, but I'm that's okay. That's yep. okay. You got to start somewhere. Davion Mitchell um, is a solid basketball player. Had a very solid rookie year. I think you know upper class. They players. gave him the nickname Off Night. Um, that's where we were going. Was probably going to have Off Night. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just extremely happy for them. Um, Let's see what they're talking about in the chat. Hopefully, we got some King fans in here. I, I'm Let's I'm see. happy because I'm four for four, um, but I'm I'm most mostly happy for the Kings, man. I, I, it's time that I don't I hate seeing the same shit from yeah. the same franchise. Honestly, when he was talking about their draft pass, I had a flashback to the Davion Mitchell, and that's not even like going back on their draft right, yeah. history. So uh, this hopefully this is turning it around, man. And for King fans, the only thing we saying about the Davion Mitchell pick because a lot of y'all misconstrued it. It's the fact that y'all already had two guards. You had Tyrese Halliburton. You had De'Aaron Fox. So it's like spending the ninth pick on a backup guard mm-hmm. isn't the most ideal thing. And y'all had a history of doing that because they drafted Willie Collins. It'll Collie be damn like if when Cleveland, they had cousins. Oh uh, yeah, if Cleveland came out here with they pick and they got a big. Or be like, the, the next hell? team, the Pistons <laughs> draft know? a point guard to back up Cade. That would be crazy. You know this chat is very polarizing. Some are loving it. And then some are hating That's it. what you love about the NBA draft. <laughs> you, you you know what I mean? You either like it or you love it. There's really no in-between. I love that. Um, Jaden Ivey is probably, if I had a guess, going to be going to the Detroit Pistons. I think we can start the conversation there about how da- dynamic that backcourt of him and K can become. Because like I said earlier, I personally, y'all feel free if y'all disagree or anything. I personally don't see him as a point guard. Yeah. But because K is so dynamic with his size and his point guard ability, that, that really makes them super dynamic, in my opinion. But yeah. me, with Jay Nive, I want him to be comfortable, and I want him to be in a situation where he can come in and do what he do best, and that's score the damn basketball. <laughs> and that's what I want him to come out and do and not have to worry about playmaking, ball handling. Mm-hmm. Like Kate, who's already been in the NBA for a year, which we know is a point guard position. It's probably the hardest position in the league to learn and transition into. Like Kate, who's already been there, do that, and let Jaden Ivey go out and be the scorer with Sadiq Bey. Yeah. That would be beautiful. Yeah, I, Detroit's one of them teams, bro. It's just like they have so many options they can go. Uh, if they went with Jaden Ivey, you just can't pass up on that talent right there, especially next to Cade. Um, to me, I like one thing about Jaden Ivey is I like his motor and the way he mm-hmm. plays. I like his – he's got a nice size for, you know, uh, you know his height and everything, kind of like a Victor Oladipo type body. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, hopefully his defense can kind of grow with that frame. Like he has the tools to do so. But – Detroit has, you know, ample amount of time to just develop their players. I also wouldn't be mad if they went out of Benedict Matherin. He's a guy that will fit next to Kay mm-hmm. them very well. He plays defense, and he moves well without the ball. That would he be my favorite the, thing. Shoot the ball well. Everything that I'm seeing from Jaden Ivey, he got his head down crying, so he must be about <laughs> to get selected. Yeah. Um, but I, I would love if he went if they went Benedict because then he would be able to go to the Pacers, which is, you know, he's a hometown oh, and kid. Tyrese. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and with Tyrese. Um but I'm glad you mentioned defense because Dwayne Casey is going to utilize his tools mm-hmm. immediately. So yep. all of the you know defensive things that we saw, struggles in college, should be fine-tuned from day one out of the gate with Dwayne Casey. And, man, K, Sadiq, Ivy, that's a good that's a good start to a rebuild for a team that wasn't shit a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. This team literally wasn't yeah. on a crumb a couple years ago. Exactly. And Killian, they have a true direction. 
Yeah, Killian Hayes didn't turn out to be the the pick, and he still has plenty of time. Mm -hmm. I'm not down on him, but you know he was a little Will bit you disappointing. Start Killian or Jay Knight? I'm starting Jay Knight. <laughs> what the no, hell? There you go. I just I wanted to see what you would say. I mean, unless <laughs> unless Killian Hayes is coming to training camp and he's just exposing Jay Ivey in some matchups that we won't be able to see, that yeah. only the Pistons would see. Jay Ivey is my starter. I just Killian Hayes just hasn't shown me shit. If they didn't take. Jaden Ivey, <laughs> Killian Hayes probably wasn't my starter. To close the year, was Killian <laughs> Hayes a starter? And uh, nah, no, I wouldn't I don't say even so. remember. I wouldn't <laughs> say so. I'm going. Yeah. Can I can I guess his average real quick? Oh, for sure. He uh, probably had probably to be like four, five points. I would say less than five. And points. we and, and we not here to down Killian Hayes. I, I like Killing Hayes and his draft class. Please believe we just we just keeping it real. We this is what our job is. Our job is to be uh, hold to people accountable and dissect Yo, Nick the fans game are in the chat. Saying that they should have traded up for Ivy. Oh, I, I, <laughs> oh I don't. I don't doubt that the Knicks. The Knicks didn't try, but you know, a trade works two ways. The Kings have mm -hmm. to be willing to trade that pick, yep. and it seems like they didn't. So we move on. That's the one thing I don't like about Knicks fans mm -hmm. is that they they always make things like bust. Like it's either that or bust. It's right. either that or fail. <laughs> At eleven, with the options and the, the the big board, you saw the people that that are going to be. We we leave tonight satisfied. It's how I came into it as a Knicks fan. If we move up, mm -hmm. oh, fantastic. But if we don't, somebody's going to be there. Somebody has to fall. Johnny Davis, Benedict Matherin, Dyson Daniels, Shaden Sharp, somebody, Malachi Branham, somebody at 11 is going to have me satisfied as a Knicks fan after this draft. So it, it I hate when Knicks fans make it a way to be disappointed. Like, that's just, it was a stretch to even get the fourth pick. Yeah. It ain't like somebody else traded for it. We just didn't get it. Um... Maybe Hami Diallo's closed. You would say Hami was closing it out. Uh, uh, I would start Hami over him, but I guess they would be like, "Oh, he want the they want that off the bench type stuff." But I mean, Kelly Hayes just in general has been uh, underwhelming. Let's see. I have some of their. You said where was your guess for? I the had stat under line? five points. Under five points a game. He ben was six point nine. Oh. Okay. Six point nine. He, he shuts, was the guy he you don't you touch up. on FanDuel. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> lost me. He lost me a lot of parlays um, with uh, with some of the lack of scoring. I remember I took him for like five point five, and he had two. Defensively, I, he brings a lot. Defensively, yes. he he can bring it on the defensive side. He had a lot of, of strides. See, yeah, there's some the, the most played lineup, which was a positive six um, points, was Cade, mm -hmm. Corey Joseph. Sadiq Bay, Jeremy Grant, Isaiah Stewart. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Now the negative eighteen point seven points <laughs> was the one with Killian Hayes. Where had Kelly Hayes, Hayes in it? <laughs> negative this the starting lineup? Huh? Is this the starting lineup you about to say? It's, I said it already. So oh. it's the same lineup with Killian Hayes, except oh. Corey Joseph is Killian Hayes. Okay. Yeah, I mean Corey Joseph is having a, a pretty like under the radar year with Detroit. I think he was shooting the ball really well for them too. Killian, Corey Joseph will always be a nice little backup PG. The only thing I don't like about Killian Hayes is okay, listen to his rookie year: six point nine points. 5.3 assists. Second year, 6.9 points, 4.2 assists. It's just super identical. Yeah, like you there was no mean? progression. Um, Shot at the field goal attempts, 7. 7.7 7 rookie year, 7 this year. He The field goal made, 2.7 hey, yeah, I mean, both years. From here and that. Minutes, 25.8. This year, 25. That's saying that I don't maximize next to Kate. You know what I'm saying? Free throw attempts. 0 0.7 last year, 1.1 this year. Like, it's just not growth. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. Even if it don't have to be necessarily out of the world. Six, but maybe yeah. maybe you want to see six points go to eight. Yeah. Or to a five assists go to 5.9. You always want to trade up, mm -hmm. especially when your rookie year wasn't anything out of this world. It ain't like it was a Tyreek rookie. Tyreek Tyree Gavin's rookie of the year <laughs> where he was averaging 25 and five, and then it dipped to fucking 15, four and two because K came. So that that's the thing that I think uh, is bothersome. But he's still super young. Yep. It's a nice culture. Less expectations. Some players always thrive when you turn down expectations. Killian Hayes was a jump starter pick for them, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. to this whole rebuild. So maybe you get Cade in here, Jaden Ivey in here, uh, Sadiq Bey has grown, and then maybe he flies under the radar and then becomes a really good rotational piece for when they start to become a playoff team. The pick is in for the Indiana Pacers, and they take Benedict Mather and the guy Woo! that all three of us love. I'm going to let y'all talk about him because y'all know y'all love him as much as I do. Mike, uh, go ahead. It's, they had to kind of like take what was kind of left after, uh, you know, they wanted to obviously kind of fill out that backcourt next to Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, they get a dude that has a lot of tools offensively. 
can, you know, score the ball, can do a little bit of playmaking. And I think he's just going to bring that type of energy that they need. I think Benedict Benedict Matherin probably has one of the prettiest jump shots in this draft. It looks so smooth. There's no hitches in it. Mm -hmm. He just catch and shoot. He cuts well. And he has all the tools to be a very good defender. I was hoping this was a guy that fell to the Blazers. But I'm happy that Tyrese Maxey, no, my God, Tyrese Halliburton is a nice guy to come play on the wing with him. Mm -hmm. Tyrese Halliburton is such an easy dude to compliment. Yes. We just keep bringing this guy's name up. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I like him in Indiana because he reminds me of a former Indiana Pacer who kind of struck their franchise on fire, Victor Oladipo. Okay. Just because Be able to, but even if he doesn't, he's playing with Tyrese Halliburton. But you see, he's showing us a glimpse of everything. This is a guy who can you can make design plays for backdoor lobs, yep. transition lobs with Tyrese Halliburton. Um, he can create his own shot, got a deep shot off the catch. This is just beautiful. One dribble pull ups if he's ran off the line. Mm-hmm. You love everything about it, and he's a competitor. So um, I think this is a good jump start today. They rebuild to have these two guys in the backcourt complement each other, and they're going to be able to guard. That's a lot yep. of size you mm-hmm. got to deal with. It's not something that you want to see him doing. Playing with that pressure of him having to try to do too much. Another guy that he reminds me of, man, it's an old name, not a current NBA player. I think y'all might see it just with his the fluid jump shot, athletic ability. Jason Richardson. Oh, Jason Richardson with the athletic ability. I, hey, Benedict Matherin got the white guy attribute. Sneaky <laughs> athleticism. <laughs> like, obviously, he can jump, but like, I, he will shit on you. Yeah. I don't think people know how explosive he is when he gets a, a that, runway. That pass was, yeah, that was yeah, a sexy that's pass. what yeah. And you, you know. got Isaiah Jackson and, and Jalen Smith. Those are yep. the type of passes going to be making. Look at this. Yo! Oh. Sneaky. Move out the way, big fella. Oh, man. Like That's so, don't get me facial. wrong. He's obviously athletic, but I don't. I think people don't know you that don't part of him. That. Yes, mm-hmm. you don't expect that from this. Like, he just he didn't even have much room space right there. He just rose up. Yeah, man, I'm excited for Indiana. I am so excited for Indiana. It's a lot of fun rebuild. That's all you can ask for in the NBA. We got competitiveness at the yep. top of the league, uh, unpredictability. There's no overwhelming favorite, and then at the bottom, though teams may not be the most competitive, they're going to be good enough to beat anybody on any given night. Mm-hmm. And there's some exciting young talent brewing for the uh, the next the next chapter the league goes into. In the next couple of years, some of our favorite players that we've gotten accustomed of, of watching as we've grown up and grown into the podcasting world, they on their way out. Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean? They on their way out. So I try not to think about that, yeah, though. I yeah. really try not to. Shout out to the Kings for jump-starting the Pacers re- retooling. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Because, man, Tyrese Halliburton was a big gift. I wish my – if I knew it was going to be that simple, man, what if we just give Julius Randle one second? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because right now we had RJ and Tyrese Halliburton. That should be nice. The garden will be rock. Yeah, for sure. With the eleven pick we got now. Um, so now we're gonna turn and jump, jump, jump start our attention. Go ahead, look in the comments real quick before I set you up with something. Let's, let's get it. Uh let's see what they're talking about. I'm a Nick fan. Okay. I'm four spots away from my team picking. Mike is a Laker fan. He has <laughs> like a bunch 30 damn. Yeah, somebody yeah, like 30 somebody agree with you. He's kind of like Jay Rich. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I know they're going to agree with me. I know a thing or two about basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a lot of basketball. Bro, for the Blazers, though, I don't know who. That they, was my next question. I don't question. know who That's they what I was preparing him for. I don't know who. I'll look in here while you answer what you expect the Blazers to do right here since you're the Blazers uh, fan of our podcast and panel. I know he's my, probably a project, but I feel like Shaden Sharp. Um, mm-hmm. Would probably be a great guy who can come in and play in that backcourt with him and Dame Anthony Simons. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a scorer. He could play off the ball, catch a shoot. I feel like he would probably be the best guy. Even though we haven't seen him play in college, I still think he has a lot of potential right there. Somebody in the comments said, can we get some trades? That's another thing I said in my video. This is the third year in a row where it was supposed to be a whole lot of speculation about deals being made. Still a bunch of time and opportunity for yep. that to happen. But so far, nobody's traded, and it's all been picks. <laughs> Let's not have that happen again. We got some people in here saying Shaden Sharp. We got some people saying best best available, best point guard who, available. Who There's like no to see go? Dyson Daniels. I would I would love, love, Dyson that's Daniels. literally what I was about to say. Dyson Daniels <laughs> to the Blazers would not be a bad Dyson pick. Daniels, bro. Yeah. 
Y'all know, but Dyson Daniels is my favorite prospect in this draft, and I just feel like he's a guy who can do a lot of good things, especially as a secondary playmaker. And if you have uh, Dame there, you already went and acquired Jeremy Grant. Yep. Uh, you know, add some more defense. Dyson Daniels isn't afraid to lay his hat on defensive end because you're going to have struggles with Simons and Dame defensively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at Shady Sharp either, like yeah. you said. Uh, as long as it's one of those two. Don't mm-hmm. do anything crazy where, like, no disrespect, A.J. Griffin is a fine prospect, but I, I don't think I want him when I have those two on and the board. He uh, he defensively will not work for with sure. Dame and Simons. For sure. And I like what Benedict, well, not Benedict back, uh, Dyson Daniels, his jump shot might not fall. But it looks nice. It's look, yeah. yeah it's no, it's uh, you're fine with misses. Right. Yeah. yeah. If, as long as sometimes that just happens in, in in you know the league or high I tier did, basketball. Yeah, I just like the fact that my man's is six eight and he's got shooters like Dame and Anthony Simons exactly. to look it out for. Yeah. You know, he's got when you got that height, you can see over screens. You can see over. Let's get it. Who we who we taking? Uh-oh. With the eighth, I mean, with the seventh, seventh. overall pick of the 2022 NBA draft, I'm predicting Dyson Daniels. I'm They're gonna probably going to take Daniels Shaden too. Sharp because Dame loved them. The Portland Trailblazers are taking Shaden Sharp, Sharp out of Kentucky. Yep. Derek, the floor is yours since you are the Blazer fan. I'm going to give you the chat back. Oh, I'm going I'm to look while you talk about your team and the selection. Offensively, I think he's going to be a guy that comes in and compliment them. So you got three guys and your you got four guys now in your starting lineup who can go out and get you buckets. Uh, we haven't seen Shaden Sharp on the defensive side of the ball because he didn't play college. So – it's going to be a very interesting aspect to see. I think he could transition well on the mm-hmm. offensive side, but I'm very interested to see how he plans out defensively. Just got a text from production. Check y'all phones really quick. Uh, I do like this pick. I agree with what you were saying. Um, you know, Shaden Sharp is a guy that Dame liked, so I'm guessing in the yep. workouts he really impressed um, and competed. I heard he was competing a lot. I, I think – what I like about Shaden Sharp is the fact that it is a mystery there. Yeah. But what I like is the fact that this right here, he was the number one prospect in high school. For a lot of times, the number one prospect usually turns out to be something. There's mm-hmm. very few times where the number one prospect coming out of high school ain't on shit. Yeah. Yep. You may get like a top, a guy that may be in a top five, maybe the fourth guy, fifth guy, maybe then pen. But the number one guy, the Andrew Wiggins of the world, you know what I mean? Those yep. level the K Cunningham's, they usually turn out to be at the least some very good basketball players. And if, if there's one thing he could do, it could be a bucket. If he can go out and score the ball for a team, he will always have a career in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I just liked what I seen. Um Obviously, he didn't go against no college competition or like that, but, like, the way he was scoring and the way he was moving, it just kind of looked effortless. Ooh, yeah. You know, and I think that they were saying that, like, uh, from uh, one of maybe his junior to senior year, like. So, he- I'm getting some some news right now. Um, the New York Knicks are still pursuing guard even after he was selected number five by the Pistons. So, not to interrupt you, but just want to keep that in the back of your mind. So, your Knicks is trying to do Things a little, are still growing. I on. wonder what they would trade for Jaden Ivey and what the Pistons would want. Well, they probably would want number 11 yeah. to start. Um, we do have two picks next year. We have our own and we have and the, the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. And then we have an abundance of young talent, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly, Cam Reddish, who Quinn would you rather? Grimes. Who would you want to cut ties with? Uh, for Jaden, I for Jaden Ivy, yeah. uh, anybody. Just, okay. I, I just wouldn't want to be a combination. Don't give up two picks and Obi Toppin any man you quickly. Right. Don't give up two picks and Quinn Grimes and Obi. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't overpay. I'm I'm fine with just sticking at eleven. But if we have to give up a pick of next year, the Dallas pick, uh, the eleventh pick, because the Dallas pick won't be anything. Yeah. Um, but I, we, people say that, but I love the Knicks drafting later in the draft versus the beginning. You, have, you look this, at Mitch you Robinson, you look at Quentin Grimes, Emmanuel Quickly. Yep. Uh, we've done really well. Emmanuel Quickly was such when a you steal. try to hit the home runs is when you off missed. Yes, probably. yes, exactly. Yeah. So you know, um, we'll see though. We'll see. I, I honestly don't think it'll happen. I think Detroit stays put with with Ivy, um, and I, and I think they just have that dynamic backcourt mm-hmm. right now on the clock though. Pelicans is another team that really can't go wrong. Man, you know. do they, they? I am. They, I am a little excited because Dyson Daniels hasn't been selected, and we're a couple picks away from my team. He could easily go here. He can. What you thinking for them? Uh, I seen. I was thinking AJ Griffin. You know, I a knockdown shooter. I think they have a lot of defensive players uh, on their team, like Herbert Jones, Jose Alvarado, and those type of players. Like you add a dude that's. I had him labeled as ready to shoot. You know, yeah. anytime he catches the ball, he's looking to launch it. Uh, he's got range to it. And, and, I mean, when Zion comes back, you need shooters on the floor. 
Yeah, I mean, A.J. Griffin wouldn't be bad. Or if they can go out and get a skilled guy like um, Jeremy Sohan, I feel like he would fit well. The only thing I don't like about Jeremy Sohan here, I've seen that in mocks, is that he don't shoot the ball. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like Mike said, you want it's a premium of shooting. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be. You know what else? Oh, what also wouldn't be bad at? if they found a way to make a trade with the Pacers and get Miles Turner. I feel like he's the one player who mm-hmm. fits good with, with this trade because, yeah. like you said, there ain't a bunch they need in a draft. So if you were able to get the floor spacing, rim protecting big next to Zion, that's out of this fucking park. Well, Valanciunas was supposed to be that, but then he stopped shooting threes. <laughs> He started off the season I mean, last year he, shooting the he, football. But ridiculous. Valanciunas not rim protecting like Miles Turner. Either. No, yeah, he's not. He's not, yeah. he's not rim protecting. So, or wouldn't Turner. be mad if they went out and got Dyson Daniels. Yeah, I think Dyson yeah. Daniels is a really good pick here. Think he could fit. Um, Dyson Daniels can go to a lot of teams. Rumor in. who blew them away in a workout. Uzman Jiang. I like. Uzman. I heard blew them away. For me, I think his floor is like Nicholas Batum. You already have Herb Jones. Trey, Mur- Trey Murphy the third from last yep. year. Why not continue to add to those wings mm-hmm. and just have a futuristic lineup? You know what I mean? Why not? Why not? I, I, I agree with you though, Mike. I think they're in a position to where they can't really do to any to anything too wrong. Chat, talk to us. Who you think they taking? Hurry up before the pick is in. It is in. I'm pretty sure for them it's already in. Yeah. Oh, true. I hate. I hate because ours is probably a little delayed. No, because they watch on Twitter as well. Oh, yeah. So we gotta be careful. Of, we gonna out. We gonna always ask their reaction instead of what they predict, because we don't want them to tell us anything before it happens. And with the eighth pick, the New Orleans Pelicans are selecting. I don't know why they be taking Dyson so long. Daniels. Yes. Let's go. That's your favorite so prospect, Dyson Daniels. Your favorite prospect. My favorite I like prospect, that suit man. Too. Yeah, I like He's that clean. suit. He is clean. Uh, shout out to moms. Definitely like his suit. And um, I think the Pelicans are just growing and growing and growing, man. Mm-hmm. He reminds me of a guy that they used to have on their team, Lonzo Ball, just because yep. he's so big, he can do so, he can do so much on a basketball court. And that shot, you know, it, I, I think they have the shot doctor to fix him. The yep. same guy that fix Lonzo's shot is going to work with him, even though I don't think it's too much about mm-hmm. mechanics. Um, I've seen Dyson Daniels talk about improving the shot, and a shot at the end of the year, he shot over forty percent. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. shot like forty four percent to close the year from three. And then look at this, get that shit out of here. Yeah, that's the thing I that's like a, is just a it's guard. a guard, yeah. <laughs> he, a guard that doesn't do guard things just because his size, and he he utilizes it too. You see guys that are like six five six six, and they play small. This mm-hmm. dude plays like his ass is a forward. It's yeah. crazy that sometimes they would be able to run out him and Herb Jones and just mm-hmm. lock up. I like how he also crashes the glass too. Like yeah. he he does a lot of dirty work things besides just try to be a star player. That right there is the difference between him and Lonzo or early Lonzo. That drive is he's not afraid to drive. He has mm-hmm. a good floater game, and when you have that floater um, and these type of rim finishes, it allows you to constantly collapse the defense and yeah. put pressure on the rim. Which with his passing ability is going to work very well with a guy like Zion because while he's driving, Zion is going back door in the dunker spot, and you either help on Dyson Daniels because he's six eight, he's going to have yep. a lot of size on a lot of guards, and if you help, he has enough passing ability to and like Mike said, crash, crash the glass. The glass he right can dump there. that bitch off to Zion and lob it up, and it's going to be. What would you say? Is, what would you say would be besides the jump shots? Is the one thing you really want to see him improve on? Probably uh, off the dribble creation. Mm-hmm. You know, guys are going to go under. Feel comfortable with you know out of the out of the bounce to be able to pull up when they the go under top of the square, yeah. Clean, bro. <laughs> Dude is so that athletic. Is, yeah, that's we see the insane. catch and shooting right now, but I want to see a little bit of that pump fake and then mid range off. So off the dribble scoring because I think every great guard has to be able to score off off the dribble just because uh, it puts so much pressure on the defense. It makes you so. Because if they can go under, it takes away the opportunities for him to get Zion the ball or, yeah. or Brandon Ingram. But mm-hmm. if he makes them really respect him, he don't have to be lights out, but just have respect to where he has to be chased. It puts so much pressure on the defense. And, man, he just – he doing shit that <laughs> power fours do. He's crashing yeah, the glass, I know blocks. C- CJ going to love playing with yes. him. Yes. Oh, of course. Yes. CJ going to love him. Yeah. This this Pelican team is going to be a real fun, sexy 2K team, um, even though – 2K ain't play like that no more. But look at that. That's, <laughs> yeah. Imagine that Zion. They gonna Instead have a of lot Michael of good, Foster, is Zion. They're going to have a lot of good defenders around Zion. I love it. Yeah. Now they need some rim protection. Yep. Dyson Daniels, man, my favorite prospect by far. I really, really like that guy. I he's, feel like, yeah, he's on a team with a lot of weapons. He, could, he like, just fits right in. He could pass, play – he could pass, put the mm-hmm. ball on the floor. I'm damn near basket. bummed. I wish they would have took AJ Griffin, but somebody <laughs> would have probably took him before the Knicks came up. But you wanted him to take oh, so he can fall to my team. The yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I knew it wasn't the reality. But a little bit piece of my heart was like, please, 
please. Um, shout out to Andre Ingram, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Laker legend. Dyson Daniels. Laker legend. Shout out to my boy <laughs> Dyson. Now up next is a, another interesting team that I'm not completely as much of a draft expert. I try to call myself. I do not know what re- direction this team is going, man. Talk to me, guys. I would say they would probably go overseas and draft um, Usman Giang. Yes, Usman Giang. What about Jalen Duran? Is Jacopo so enough? I don't, think, I don't I was know. Thinking, I haven't heard much about Jacopo being on the market. So what? I feel like he in the market every. That's why I would say <laughs> yeah. they would go that way just so they'd be comfortable with letting him go. And, you know, and they have something in return. That Wasn't your Bulls interested of. in him? Yeah, that was during the season. Yep, but. I think they would go Ujman Giang. I think they like those skilled foreign players who can come in and do a little bit of everything. And my what would Pee-wee do? I had them taking Ujman Giang and nine. Just because that position he plays, that versatile 3-4, is like a vacant spot. Who was the last power four they had? They had, they had Trey Lyles, Doug Lamarcus McDermott. Aldridge. And even when he was there, wasn't he the five? Yes, he was. DeMar DeRozan <laughs> was playing the four. <laughs> Rudy Gay and DeMar and DeRozan. Rudy Gay, yeah. So I, I think that position, they had Keldon Johnson, 6'5", power forward out there. 6'4", you they, being generous. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really haven't had the true power forward. So I, I, I wouldn't mind uh, Usman Jiang, but I really like uh, Jalen Duran if they get him because he was good at Memphis, but Memphis didn't have a point guard like DeJounte. Say they could really get him the ball, so I don't think we, we saw. We don't know the if Dejounte gonna beat him. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of weird. weird. But that's some bullshit. He might be playing with John Collins. They not gonna be traded. <laughs> I'm mad he tweeted out the popcorn. Like that's what I would do. It was, it's so silly that it's just like, oh, let me get my. It's, it's just so stupid. Somebody else did that today too. Um, somebody tweeted out like the eyes emoji because their name was in trade rumors. I forgot who it was. I, I think Dejounte tweeted out eyes emoji too. He did yeah. a while ago, yeah. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, did I tell you that's part of the reasons why I like him so much and why Yakapoda was doing so well? Yes, and because uh, he was giving him what type of assist? Spoon feeding him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right there it is. And then Durant, all he got to do was really finish the play. Yep, that's not hard to do for him. And then play defense. That sounds like a you know easy job. What I love from Jalen Durant is he has a grown man body. body from day one. Gonna be able to come in and take uh, NBA contact. Mm-hmm. We sh- they showing Dejounte Murray right now Two. doing his shit. And we saw some dump offs to Yakapoto. That could easily be Jalen Duran, but they definitely shouldn't trade Dejounte. I think that's some bullshit. So if they if don't they, draft a center, that means Jakob is probably going to be here for the future. And he's on the last year. Still. He's on the last year of his deal uh, this upcoming year. So we're we going to see. And teams are going to want him. Yeah, he's a very good center. Right now, they are saying the pick is in. Last prediction before this pick is made. Do y'all think we get in the curveball or any of the names we mentioned? I think be we're getting one of the names we mentioned. I think we're probably going to be Osman. Yeah. No AJ Griffin action? No. No Johnny Davis action? I don't, I don't I can see, see Johnny Davis, but I, I think Maybe. it's going to be the two we mentioned. I think okay. it's going to be the two we mentioned. I would be extremely happy if it was one of the two. I think that would be really, really nice. And then that puts the Knicks in position to have a lot of options. So he's He sounds like he's talking from an aspect of he wants the Knicks, some, someone he wants to fall to the Knicks. No, the guy that I wanted to fall is gone. Dyson mm-hmm. Daniels is gone. I have no idea what the Knicks are going to do because I have no idea what the Wizards are going to do after the Spurs because the Wizards are another team like the Spurs. That have everything except one position, which is the point guard position. But their draft pick at ten, there is no point guard there yeah. to take. So I'm, I, I, I don't know what direction the Wizards are going to take. That's going to be extremely interesting. And then we had Bradley Beal opting out, but then he said, "Wait, huh?" Yeah. So now I'm confused <laughs> on what to expect from Bradley Beal in the direction of the Wizards. Um, that's going to be extremely interesting. This is the part I hate of the draft where I'm, I'm damn near about to go on my. They phone. just say pick is in, and pick they don't in, announce. And Jay Billis is just. Talking and talking, talking. So, um, somebody said this sounds familiar. What did I do? Wow, wow, wow! Tell me something. It's not one of the two. Is what I'm telling you. Oh, they caught, they hit us with a curveball. Yes, the guy that I did not mention because I didn't think this is the this is the guy that I picked in my Spurs rebuild. Wow, who? I'm guessing it's Mark Williams. I'm I don't so, know. I don't know. It's, I'm so anxious now. I yeah. don't want to tell y'all because I'm mad. Yeah, I, I, I want to look for myself. Reaction, so don't even say that. I, I'm, I'm so, so mad. I'm, I'm so. They, hey, hold me accountable. I said we gonna <laughs> have the element of surprise, and I still went and looked. And I but spoiled that's faithful because the pick is in. Been in for that. It's been up for like two, three minutes now. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Here he is. Here, finally, with the ninth pick of the 2022 NBA draft, the San Antonio Spurs select. Jeremy Sohan what? from that's, Baylor. That's, he's that's still a four. Pick. He's still yeah, a four. Still a we four. said four. He's still a four. 
Um, I love Jeremy I love Sohan. It. One of the comparisons I recently came up with for him after scouting this man for for the whole year, a former bull, Joe Kim Noah. Joe Kim Noah doesn't play as big. Yeah, but he has that funky personality, the hair, the passing, the defensive upside and versatility. Not gonna do much of this shit right here. That was just no. a good shot. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, um, <laughs> but I just love his energy, and I think yeah. he's going to be somebody that guys would love playing with. Um, very smart and high IQ, willing shooter too. Mm-hmm. Just because he don't make willing shooter, as long as he can do this and be respected, that's all you ask for. But that defensive upside and that playmaking from his position is is just man. I said that he was a poor man's version of Draymond Green. Uh, he's an energy guy. He rebounds the ball well. He defends all five positions. He play makes at a really good level. Uh, and there's just he's like your Swiss Army knife. That's mm-hmm. why I compared him in like that mode of Draymond Green at that four spot. Yeah, I like you said they kind of needed that bigger size at the four. Kelvin mm-hmm. Johnson, <laughs> six five with uh, with shoes on. But this is <laughs> but I don't know anything that's like super defensive. I was just gonna like for them. Obviously they develop. They're good at developing their talent, especially somehow corner threes always. But also, um, I'm mad at these highlights. Not they ain't so it ain't so far on one. But well, I think this is the NCAA that put this highlight tape together. Like it's not, they're not showing the best parts of his game. That was finally yeah. a, a nice pass. I want to see the defense. Yeah, because that's my thing. I want to see Dejounte and his defense next. Yeah, yes. him and Jakob Dejounte. Yes. Ooh. And Devin Vassell, if he can. Devin Vassell defend. is one of my favorite guys. Eventually, the Spurs team, are going to be some nice. Yeah, I, I I like this pick. Very unexpected. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like you said, Spurs pick because you're solid. Know what you're getting, and he has the tools. They're going to develop him. And utilize those tools for the fullest. And what I love about the Spurs is they don't care about the media, mocks, or any of that. They're going to take who they like. And last year, they surprised us with Josh Primo at 11. Boom, this is a surprise as this well. This was another guy that I felt like was kind of up and There's down in defense. up and down in mock drafts. They had him yes. high. They had him, you know, close to the 20s and everything. But And like, I think he's a Spurs guy. He's high IQ. He can come in and play with that moving, cutting system that they play. And I feel like it's perfect for him. I, now I'm interested to see... Are we seeing Keldon at the three now, or what is? Yeah, I, I think we should see Keldon at the but three. But his ball handling ain't really. You can put him at the four. He's just gonna guard the three. I don't know. They gonna play on the floor together. Since though. when did ball handling have to be there for you to be but a three? It's not even that, but it's also like his shooting. As long as he's if he's not in the corner, it's kind just of very. Conti- suspect. You can put him in a corner as a three. Oh, I guess. When it, yeah, the, the things you saying ain't it don't matter. Like the three and a four is such an interchangeable position. I don't see what's the difference. <laughs> if you okay with him playing a four, and do you want them both on the court at the same time? I wouldn't would mind shooting? it. I wouldn't mind, especially like you said, if you have Dejounte creating a Devin Vassell space in the floor, Kellen Johnson, he in the he's corner. His, yeah, he's got his offense, and then Yakapoto. Yakapoto does his own thing. You know, he, he he's good at. Having the little drop, he being in position for drop down passes and stuff Damn, like that's that. That's strong ass. Man. Another thing you also have to remember is this not this is not a championship team. Yeah. All of the pieces to the puzzle don't, don't have to fit extremely right now. So yeah, you may have some times where they both on the floor and they both liabilities from the outside perimeter. That's okay. It's gonna be growing pains. Yep. But long term goal, you have some versatility and some flexibility. And defense is where the Spurs have always laid their head on. They're gonna figure it out. Like I said, both are willing shooters. You don't mm-hmm. want no guy that ain't that's out there not shooting. Yeah. Um, and they're gonna have games where they make them. Yeah. They're gonna have games where they miss. Elton Johnson's definitely gonna have games where he had five, six threes. Yeah. You know? All from the corner. I, I don't give a fuck if it's all yeah, from yeah. He can hit wherever. Yeah, it's the it's same amount three. of points. Same, long, yep. same, amount, same amount of points that he hit. Five half court shots. Long as it go on, man. Let me see what chat right. talking about. This is another team. I, I'm really curious of what direction they want to go. Um, like you said, they have a little bit of a later pick, and a lot of like the top guys are off the board now. But we just got some. We yeah, just got. Chat I, is Chad is very confused. Uh, they're all saying that this is a very weird pick. The Spurs. Like I feel like the Spurs really caught everybody off guard. The Spurs do that though. Yeah, the Spurs do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what was surprised. Um, just because he was a guy that was in the conversation around this range, definitely. Uh, you know what it may be. It may be people looking at Mox and expecting one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would we were throwing off a little bit too, but I don't think it's an outrageous. But especially if you're a Spurs fan, the Spurs have shown us that they're they're there for because the, Josh Primo was not. 11 on anybody's radar mm-hmm. at 11 last year. He was a project. Like on anybody's radar. I and mean, I was a Josh Primo guy. I went on a podcast saying that is the guy. And I still had him like late first at best. And then he went 11th. So the Spurs from now on, ladies and gentlemen at home, when the Spurs pick next year, 
we're not going to try to figure it out. We're just going to let them surprise us. And then that, that's going to be the year where they do what the mock says. Right. They're going to have a, a top five pick or something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the draft. How y'all feeling about the draft so far? I like it, it's, especially that Spurs pick caught us a little bit off guard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but everything seems like it's pretty in line. Uh, Dyson Daniels will be good for the Pelicans, so everything's been good for me. Mike? I haven't liked it. I like how they started off with the curveball and went with Paolo to start it off with. Yep. How I- does it feel um, from a viewing perspective? This is y'all first year really diving in into these prospects. Mm-hmm. How, what's the difference been like for y'all watching, knowing them versus previous years where you – just not probably knew who they was at all, besides it's, the top five. It's great knowing the situations that they're coming in and how they could fit mm-hmm. and what they bring to the table and how they can complement the guys around them. That's probably my best thing. Um, I mean, it's just like it, it's it's kind of weird for me because, like, I, I, I feel like I'm pretty good at looking at talent to be like, okay, that fits there. Um, i just always been a big NBA guy, but knowing, like, you know, top 50, 60 players that's coming to the draft and which each brings, it makes me look at how teams select them differently. Right. When I see a guy that's like, oh, you took him? <laughs> when you had a perfectly good guy that fits your system, you know, a couple uh, spots down. So, like, it's like just basically the reaction to the later picks, really. With the 10th pick of the 2022 NBA Johnny draft, Davis. the Washington Wizards select. Johnny Davis oh! out of Wisconsin. Did you glimpse it? No, no, I did not okay. glimpse it. I, my phone even in my hand. All right. <laughs> Check them comments. I know a lot of college basketball fans love Johnny Davis. This is a guy that I fucking wanted to go to the Knicks. Um, fuck. Damn, I'm about to explode He would have been here. such a tip. Yes, dude, man. But I like the I like the defense he brings. Uh, I guess you plug him. Honestly, they probably had the backcourt of him and, and Bradley Beal. If Bradley Beal's, you know, I'm on the pissed. Lost, lost now we probably time. taking John, uh, fucking AJ Griffin. Ain't nothing wrong with AJ. Ain't nothing Griffin. wrong with AJ Griffin, but he ain't fucking with Johnny Davis. <laughs> Bro, that, Johnny Davis one of the best scorers in the draft. <laughs> Damn man, and I, I'm taking Malachi Branham. Fuck it. <laughs> I like guys who can put the ball in the deck and do a bunch of different shit. Mm-hmm. AJ Griffin is going to spot him up, got him. I'm not mad at that. I'm going to love him if he's a Nick. But, man, him and Thib's going to have some fucking boxing matches with the way he played defense. Yeah, it's going to be hard. He is definitely not a Thibodeau guy. Damn. He, <laughs> this guy is a Thibodeau guy. This is a guy uh, a lot of people compared to Devin Booker. I was one of them early on. Um, but then the more and more I watch him, I'm like, you know what this guy remind me of? It's not the most glaring one, but Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in mid-range operator can post up, defends, a lot of effort, a lot of heart. Um Capable of making threes, yeah. But the Jimmy Butler shit really stuck out because as you're watching him play, especially in like crunch time type moments, he's making winning type plays. Winning plays, and that's why I say the Wizards got to be happy with him. I know Knicks would have damn sure been happy with him, but this is a guy that I think can try to help them right now. They want to satisfy Bradley Beal uh, for as long as they got him, but I think this is another dude that you know after the Bradley Beal era, this is another building block. Yeah, he's definitely a high volume bucket. He's a dude that averaged like over 16 shots a game. So he definitely will come in and shoot that thing. So that's good. The shot doesn't look bad either. Yeah. No, no. The shot don't look I think, bad. I think the percentages don't represent him just mm-hmm. because he has such a big, big workload. Yeah, he was uh, the number one option. Yeah, and like the number two option too. It's just like there was him or nothing. Yeah. And like look at this shot. That's just not the best shot. <laughs> it went in, but it's just not the best type of shot. And if though, this is the Jimmy Butler that's right here. Post his ass up. Take what the defense give you. Hop over there. Yeah, got there. a lot of the hop steps, that's, euro steps, those moves. That Jimmy Butler esque man. He would have nice in Madison Square Garden. Very interested to see what we do here at eleven. Um, Tata, no, I'm playing. <laughs> he been talking Ty-Ty about Tata ever since we brought him up. He's like, man, I do not want him with my Knicks. Would bro. you like for them to take Durant and move on from Mitchell Robinson? No, and they said that they're looking to resign Mitchell Robinson, so I don't see that happening. Um, it's not that I don't like Tata, is I don't like him at 11. Mm-hmm. I think that's extremely high at 11 when you have guys like AJ Griffin, Uzman Jiang. Yeah, I, I Uzman mean, Jiang. <laughs> is it any chance we take him? Oh, that would be a very yeah. good pick for y'all. Hell yeah. Do y'all know who y'all coach is? <laughs> Come on now. You know damn well. He don't even like his offense is be slow or whatever, but if he's, as long as he's playing defense, that don't matter. Yeah. Who was uh, Tib starting at point guard a couple years ago? Alfred Payton? Yep. Come on now. Alfred Payton was out there faithfully <laughs> just because he was playing defense. Who's mine going to play 40 uh, minutes a game? I am very <laughs> curious to see what you do with this pick, though. Um, definitely, definitely have the urge to go on Twitter and see. But I, 
Surprise gotta stay. Element. Yeah, you yes. gotta keep that surprise. Element. Element. Surprise. Uh, I don't want you to look into the comments until after this yeah. pick because they will mm-hmm. spoil it they for us for sure. Will spoil it. Um, the pick is in. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. As a guy who was a Nick fan that came into this draft saying, "There's no way we don't leave draft night satisfied." I am definitely a little nervous. So if you take Griffin, would you be satisfied? Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, at this point, it ain't like they took him over Johnny Davis. Yeah. Um, at this point, we just getting the – I don't I don't want to disrespect nobody. We kind of getting the bottom of the barrel. I just don't want to be surprised. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want to take Oshai Abaje, and I never pictured a scenario with him on the Knicks. Well, they take, like, EJ Liddell. Don't say that. Don't, don't say that. Now at 11. Maybe both they take EJ Liddell. Now at 11. Now at 11. Yeah, it's just it, – it's so many scenarios that I pictured in my brain that now that we hear – it's like, man, but I'm looking at A.J. Griffin, I'm looking at Malachi Branham, and I'm looking at Uzman Jiang. I think the safe thing is A.J. Griffin. The most expected thing is A.J. Griffin. So the Knicks probably just take A.J. Griffin. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I still think if we walk away with A.J. Griffin, that's still what I said. Yeah. We don't leave disappointed. He's a guy that's going to be able to spe- – we need perimeter shooting. Yeah. We have needed perimeter shooting so, 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 so bad. Because that R.J. Barry 42% wasn't realistic. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you just want shooters up for your R.J. Barry, you know? Yeah. Here we go. With the 11th pick, my New York Knicks are selecting... Uzman Jiang. I read his lips. Uzman Jiang, let's go! <laughs> let's go! Bro, I I'm just surprised it. my man's D Mills said he read his lips for that one. I was not expecting that, but that is a hell of a <laughs> pick, bro. Like I said, Tib is gonna love him with that defense, and he he's gonna get the opportunity to grow playing. You know, thirty. If once he gets the opportunity, I can see him playing thirty minute plus minutes. You know, once he finds his way into rotation, the way he defends and the tools he has. Y'all know what what I, what they was comparing Uzma Jane mm-hmm. to? Who? Paul fucking George. I can see it, bro. Really? You know why? It's yes. it's the smoothness. It's yes. the smoothness. Coming into this yeah. year, it's compared. He got a good relationship with Paul George. Paul George working out with him. He was wearing Paul George shoes because they were calling him the baby Paul George. He started off slow in the beginning, like Mike said, yeah. with the New Zealand Breakers. So people was in. But yes, I am so happy with this pick, man. Now, I ain't gonna lie. Never in a million years did I think Lakers have offered. The, Washington, Westbrook for Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Kentavious call with Pope Wizards decline. <laughs> hey, see, I might take that deal. I, I would take that deal. <laughs> KCP was lighting that shit up. And, both of them was lighting it up for the— Oh, what, a trade happened. What was it? They traded them to the OKC Thunder in exchange for multiple first-round picks. Ooh. Ujman Jiang. Oh, oh, shit. What? That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I did not see that. That's amazing. So he's going to OKC. to OKC. It's about time they did something with all them damn picks. Did that happen just right now? Because he didn't he just put on a Knicks hat? Oh they, I hate that they do that, though. That if a guy I traded. Am so pissed. <laughs> Shout out to the people that's watching us live. Bro, they just ripped your heart, didn't they? So yes, wait, bro. So y'all get nothing this draft? It's their future picks, so hopefully we getting twelve. The hell, <laughs> I don't, I don't like. I have no idea, but I, as soon as I said I'm happy on Twitter, everybody was like, "P, you should trade it." Damn! Wow. Yeah, it still says he's it still say the Knicks. That's messed up, bro. <laughs> I thought the Knicks had they had Joe back for a second, but they failed you. He's gonna be nice. Hey, OKC man. They weren't you talking about them picking up him? Yes. Too? weren't you talking about them I picking up? I can't have him? shit. I can't get Johnny Davis. We get Uzman Jang, something that I knew wasn't the Nick thing to do, but for a second, they fucking got me. <laughs> I need to know the rest of the details, man. If they keep any, they know way in hell y'all letting them have two, 11, <laughs> and 12. It's no way. It's no way they keep an 11 no and 12. And then here go Chet talking. I don't care about nothing he's saying right now until <laughs> I figure out the details to what's going on with this damn Nick's trade because I am shook, as my girlfriend would say. I am punching the fucking air. Excuse me for my language, Bleacher Report. I am mad. I am mad. I was oh just saying God. that OKC traded their picks away. They still got another prospect they got to use. <laughs> it's not like they got a solidified guy, but I mean, we talked about how they're trying to go with that futuristic outlook and all I'm that. I'm here. We got audio stuff. problems. Somebody in the comments said, mm. 
Yeah, ain't nothing I can do about it, bro. It's not. That's not part of my job. I can't do nothing for you. I'm, I apologize, though. Our producer said he'll take care. We get it. Uh, we get it. We getting it worked on right now. I am so upset. That's kind of crazy to come to this draft and they potentially will leave with just two future first round picks. Oh man. I, I can see if the Knicks were like a really good team right now. Like they were like a contending team and it was like, oh, we, we could we don't want the young project. We'll take the future first. Guess who they took twelfth. Who? Jalen Williams. <laughs> And it's not going to the Knicks though. It's just I don't it's know if it, they going to OKC? I don't know if it's going to the Knicks. It's yet. just OKC's pick. They got another pick. It's saying, yeah. it, look, the Knicks are trading number eleven overall pick Uzma Dean to Oklahoma City in exchange for multiple first round picks. It don't tell me if it's this year, next year, two thousand and twenty seven when EJ is going to be in the fucking draft. I don't know <laughs> Bro, anything, but it tells me the pick? next pick right here, this pick that is in twelve, it's going to say Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara. Oh. I don't know where he's going. But if he comes to the Knicks, you happy? That's a, you gonna be happy for me? Hell yeah, okay. we'll be happy. <laughs> That's one of my guys. Y'all need another like scoring type yes. guard and dude who yeah. can play make plays for y'all. But so. as of right now, we got to talk about him as if he's a Thunder because I have no idea, bro. That's crazy that's, if they bring in three lottery picks. That's so much depth for the for the Thunder. That's ridiculous. That's just how they just have so much going on over there. That is like, who the fuck you give a minute? But what to? you say earlier though. You can't play all yeah, of you them. Can't you play cannot all play all of them. Jalen Williams played the same position as Trey Mann and Shea. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm still recovering from this. People on Twitter, they caught me in 4K, y'all. Look I? at this picture. They caught me in 4K. <laughs> I literally couldn't believe. <laughs> I could not believe. <laughs> that. I mean, it's what you wanted to hear, and then he just like took it away from you. I gotta make this my profile picture. I gotta make this my profile picture. Tell me things that y'all like about Usman Jan. I don't even think we really got to talk about him because I was so disappointed. Mm -hmm. I had brought it up that you know, like the fact that he had struggled. I like how he kind of made the little bounce back over the course of the season. Um, that was his big issue. Is he said he had to work on his body, you know, playing against you know older men and stuff like that. Went just college basketball, so um, I like. I just like the fact that he's a worker already. Yeah, I feel like he's very skilled, and he could just come in as fit with that Oklahoma City Thunder team, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you look at the versatility defensively. Chet, uh, that's going to be very nasty. Shea is a very good defender. They just got a lot going on over there, and I, I'm very interested to see how they handle this depth. Mm -hmm. and There's just so much there, and it's like, yeah, like P said, you can't play everybody. So Yeah, and that could remember we talking about Paul George. Paul George ain't come in as Paul George. Yeah, like he, he developed a lot of that offensive talent. He was very raw for his size. He had all the skill sets. But he had to kind of, it took some years for it to be polished. Mm, mm, mm. The Thunder still have the 12th pick. It isn't part of the Knicks trade. I said, damn. So they trying to bring in three lottery prospects. Now, it's funny how the chat is trolling the Knicks. Knicks have done it again. <laughs> Common ale for the Knicks. There has to be something <laughs> that we just don't know right y now. Y'all traded hey. back last year, didn't y'all? Trading back, those are future first rounders. Hey, Celtics Green says they're Self taking high LeBron. Y'all getting right now, so LeBron can come now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to want to stay with this pop up into my mind because I love Uncle LeBron too much to disrespect him right now. National stream vision. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I need Derek and Mike to carry the next at least seven picks because this is. I have a headache all of a sudden. Well, hey, okay. The Knicks, the the New York Knicks. This is gonna be Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams. Uh, damn, he 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 ain't happy. That, he that, knows. that he, was the most uh, un he looks very enthusiastic good. pick he I've ever seen. He don't want to deal with all that New York traffic. Oh no, he's going. He's to, going to OKC. He's going to OKC. My bad. He already know them guards over there. Hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> he like, How the hell am I gonna get minutes behind <laughs> Shay? <laughs> he looks sad. Don't he? Like, yeah. like what the hell? He just, but that's one of the things I wrote in my notes about him. Though. That is a he's smile. emotionless. No, he just kind of, yeah. He, I don't want to say emotionless, but you kind of don't know how his game is going. You don't know if he got thirty or zero. And I think that sometimes <laughs> even kill is the best way to be. He did just crack a smile. Um, maybe Mike Wright. Maybe I mean we did see the pick seven minutes ago. So and I think the fact that he's a three year player it kind of makes him like kind of NBA ready. Older guys tend to come in the league with like a more ready, poised mm -hmm. style of basketball that you don't see from rookies. Yeah, another reason why he my guy, Kobe guy, got the number 24, and mm -hmm. I'm, every time I see him in a clip, he's got some Kobe's on. So I love anybody that, 
you know, that's who they kind of like you got that type of mindset. And being a guard with a seven two wingspan is ridiculous. Yeah, so yeah, he so. he could play the three next to Shea. Yeah. So uh, the rich get richer. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm I'm literally I need to hear the future picks that y'all got, bro. Uh the rich get richer. I'm trying to keep Cause I don't, y'all could have used another pick. I'm trying Bro, to stay had a- tapped in until what's going on. But the longer I stay tapped in, the more I'm finding out about picks that I'm not trying to find out about. Because yeah. I want the element of surprise. Oh man, it's okay, P. But you know what that also can mean? What we have two picks next year of our own. Mm-hmm. We and just say, got multiple. Okay, so you got 18 picks, 18 first round picks until 2027. We just exactly. got multiple from the Thunder. Mm-hmm. It said multiple first round picks, so that's potentially four first round picks. Are we finna do a trade that I don't know about? Are we finna give the the Detroit Pistons four first round picks for Ivy? Oh like what's God. going on? I don't. I, I have no idea. Even though I, 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 this, I you're I be- saying this might be a chess move and not a checkers move. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm saying. I hope it is. Is it? I'm not. I don't yeah. want to be held accountable yeah. for saying that. That's what they're doing because they definitely will. Could not. I, I also think I just read that the Pistons are keeping Ivy. So uh, <laughs> ignore that part. But for somebody else, Bradley Beal. No, it had to be a chess move for sure. Because I just don't see what would be the direction. Like y'all. I mean, y'all have some vets. Like if y'all trying to compete, but y'all also had a fair amount of. You know, young guys that I think y'all could have been building for for the future. What, they want to throw a boatload of picks in the package for Donovan Mitchell? Donovan mm-hmm. Mitchell ain't worth that many picks. <laughs> I'm upset if we give them those picks. Donovan yeah. Mitchell is 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 it's like the our Mavs. The picks we already had is good enough to get Donovan Mitchell. You know what I mean? Like, Would you I, say two first-rounders is too much? We had 11. We had next year and a Mavs. We have, we have three picks, but of the 11 pick and then the two we have next year. Mm-hmm. So what have, what? We could have gave them a combination of those two. <laughs> yeah, why the fuck y'all got to do this yeah. if y'all could have so, just got them? What the hell? Charlotte's confused, about to get man. very about to get a very good center. I feel like they go they forward gonna, right here. You you think they're driving a forward? I, they, I they have they a fit. A, I think they're getting a guard. Oh, Ooh, they shit, got a, they got two. The over here. They got a pick at fifteen. I feel like that's where they get their bid because Cleveland not drafting no center. If Cleveland drafted center, I would be surprised. As that's hell. What I said in my video. So I you might no, as well get the four. Yes. Would you like? Because you know Cleveland is probably looking at a four. But I don't guard. see four. I go guard because the four you have Miles Bridges, uh-huh. Hayward that you're trying to cherry. You Unless they to, feel like they don't want to pay Miles Bridges the money. Unless more. you mean like a, a combo. A wing. wing. Type okay, like yeah, yeah. A, I, I say wing. Something yeah, like that. A ba- I think a Baji, mm-hmm. a Balakai, nice. Branham, and then 15th, you take Mark Williams. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking Duran. Uh, a Duran is still on the Yeah, that's why I was thinking they was thinking yeah, at 12. You don't want to yeah, just leave him because he's a hot <laughs> commodity. But again, like me and Mike said, he's a hot commodity. Where? I, w- I think Jalen Duran is a very popular. He's I'm saying, where is he a hot commodity? For teams that need what? They need a center, yeah. The team picking after them need a what? A guard. Yep. He'll be there for <laughs> You know how Dan Allen will be looking if they picked his Man, ass up. Jared Boy. Allen, Evan Mobley, uh, Ke- Laurie, Kevin Love, Laurie Kevin Love. And then they say, yeah, give us Jalen Duran. Or is Jalen Duran that much of a talent that they can't pass up on? You got, you got, bro. You can't do that. You just can't. That's the damn like that, a, that's, that's a Sacramento. Curveball. That's Sacramento drafted Davion Mitchell. That's a big time curveball. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the details. Look, look, even at the athletic just popped up on my screen. It said Knicks trade eleven to OKC. Return not yet known. <laughs> I I've don't never, know. That's not a good sign. Uh, that's not a good sign. Man, they return still, not yet known. They still is crazy. Discussing. Hey, <laughs> hey, put. I'm finna, I gotta make a tweet to make, man. I gotta make a tweet tonight, bro. That's not that's, good that at all. That picture you looking shocked is hilarious. Charlotte is selecting Jalen Duran. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't want to see it, but it popped up in my face. Smart move. Pause. Very smart move. They've been needing the center for a minute now. Mason. I love him with this young team. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love him with this young team. He's very long, athletic, runs the floor well. He could switch. Mm-hmm. He he might even occasionally surprise you with a nice little fifteen foot jumper. Is, is Mason Plumley still under contract for them? No, he's not. I think he's a free. Wait, no, no, no. He is. He is. He is. Uh, I mean, like I, I'm not saying deal. he for to take any oh, opportunity away. He that boy be playing like twenty minutes a game anyway yeah, no. as a star. Duran is coming in but already. I was wondering if he just had a full minutes. clean slate uh, coming in. Oh no, Mason. Plumlee honestly, I wouldn't. Honestly. Well, if the shot is going to try to come out and like try to make the playoffs and everything, I would be like, man, I would honestly start him. Oh, Mason yeah, for Plum- sure. But Mason Plumley, 
You know, he he does a little bit in his 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, no. Mason Plumlee is for sure automatically going to the bench. I'm, I wouldn't even question it when I got Jalen Duran coming in. I like that, you know, his, yeah, the mobility is going to be great for them, especially with LaMelo running up and down that court, Miles Bridges right next to him, and then you got a big man there. And his motor. He, he just plays with all energy. For everybody at home, we all aware there's some technical audio issues. Just to be straight up honest with y'all, there's nothing us three up here can do. We appreciate y'all informing us. We are aware, but spamming us is not going to fix it. And I'm not a technical uh, producer, so I'm just doing my job. Um, and as soon as we can fix it, we will have it for y'all for sure, for sure. Apologies for that. Uh, we will get it fixed up as soon as we can. Thank you for staying around and communicating that to us. Jalen Duran, 13th yep. overall pick. Um, like it just because he, ha- he has a playmaker next to him. I feel like Memphis didn't have that natural playmaker that Charlotte is going to have. So I think it's uh, some things that we haven't seen from Jalen Duran that could be taken up to another level. Or things that we have seen maybe will turn up a notch now that he has a playmaker. That was one of the most impressive things for me. You know, you don't have a play, a pick and roll partner for a guy like him, rim running big. That yeah. is the key thing to have. Uh, yep. You know, somebody so, that can find you. Yeah, so to have, for him to still have a, an, an incredible year without that speaks volumes how good he can be. And um, I'm, I'm hoping they can figure out who the coach is going to be. That would be nice to know to figure out how they're going to utilize him and develop him. But Charlotte over the years has been a nice, fun team. And mm-hmm. if they can bring Mac Miles Bridges, you enter him, LaMelo, Terry Rozier, James Booknight, Kai Jones from last year. Uh, I think you can still have a pretty good, intriguing team. And I don't think uh, I don't think they're done. They're trying to move on from Gordon Hayward, so they will be an active team, and they have another pick at 15. How do you feel about that BAM comparison you just had? I like the BAM comparison a lot, um, just some. because, like I said, there's a lot that we haven't seen. But the size, body, and uh, some of the, the the playmaking that we did see from Jalen Duran in Memphis mm-hmm. gives you the hope that his upside can reach Bam level. I think a comparison for the people um, at home and watching is just a, a mold and a foundation of what to think about. It don't mean that it's exactly who he's going to be. It's not oh, saying yeah. he's going to be exactly Bam defensively and do everything that's Bam doing, but it's just to give you some idea it's of like what a gist, type of player. Like yeah. a smaller gist. Just an idea. Yeah, no. yeah and I, I like how LaMelo's been getting a lot of confidence shooting that three ball, especially from deep. Mm-hmm. And so for him to run that pick and roll a lot, give him a nice big target that wants to roll to the rim, you know, just open it up for him. Yeah. Yeah, and they haven't had a good center in so long. That is good. Yeah, who is at, the last good Al center? Al Jefferson. Al Jefferson. Yeah. They now have a guy see. that can be right behind their guards, defensively protecting the rim, blocking shots. What are we predicting for the Cavs to do here at 14? Now that, um, I like Malachi Branham. Malachi Brown right does. here, a dude that I'm he gonna fill in that two spot, can create a little bit, catch and shoot, play off the ball. He just meshes well with Darius Garland, and then you already have your front court kind of set up. So get a a guard that can do a little bit of everything and just compliment your your lead guy. Yeah, Malachi Brandon was probably the guy for me too. Thing about Malachi Brandon is he wouldn't have to go anywhere. He <laughs> played at Ohio State. Yes, he did. He played at St. Vincent St. Mary, like LeBron James from Cleveland. So. Um, I, I would like to see that for him. I think Ochai Abaje is also an option here for them. Um, just anybody that can that can help Darius Garland on that wing. I do like Malachi Branham because he can take some of the, the the ball handling responsibilities. You may not get that. You're probably you're not going to get that from Ochai. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm just cut it straight. Right. You're not going to get that from him. So Malachi gives him a little one two punch. He's like a younger version of what they have in Karis Levert, but younger and less expensive. And I think Levert is going to be entering his last year of his deal going into this season. So, um, you know, with the Collins injury, the unknown of what he's going to do mm-hmm. in free agency, that would be a nice security blanket of getting Malachi Branham. Mm-hmm. I saw the notification that Woj and Shams tweeted, but I didn't click on it, so I still don't know to confirm to y'all who they're selecting. And, so and I don't think Cleveland was like totally impressed with what they got from Karis LeVert. I think they could think like that's expendable. Yeah, you know, uh, we thought it was going to be better. You thought it would be like an ideal option for him, and maybe it was just not enough time for him. But, you know, I'm not. Totally bought in on what Karis LeVert did for Cleveland. Yeah, if it don't work out, you bring in Malachi Branham, you start him, or either you bring him off the bench because Karis is working, and now you have a nice little backup guard tandem. Or don't forget about Isaac Okoro. Oh, yeah. You start the game with defense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hope that uh, Isaac Okoro can shoot. But they start Lowry marketing. At the three. Yeah. So your backcourt mate would be Isaac Okoro. Oh, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's literally a lineup that they're running. No, yeah, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) I want to say they had some time where Isaac Okoro actually – 
I want to say he had got benched for some time. Too. Yeah, because yeah. the offense is just yeah. sometimes so t- bad as far as the shooting <laughs> yeah. that it's like, damn, that defense got to sit down. Especially when you have Evan, <laughs> uh, Evan, Fring, Evan Mobley and yeah. Jared Allen. Um, they definitely got options. They definitely got options. I hope they – maybe they trade Kevin Love. I don't know if he wants – I know he wants to be there. He likes it because they are competitive. But Is that contract – how many years he got left on that contract? What, one? Maybe like two or one. Two or one. I would, I would definitely export trading him because he doesn't fit the timeline on what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the playoffs. They was there. <laughs> they he was a part of that. Too. Evan he Fr- honestly yeah. could have been a six-man conversation. Yes, yes he was. Yes, he, he honestly could have been. Kevin Love was turned it up. Mm-hmm. I would I, just love to see him on like a competitive like championship team. I just I don't just, think a competitive championship team has the payroll to add him if he's not going to be one of the top three players. And at this point yeah. in his career, he's not even a top – Argu- he's arguably a top three player on this team, which is in the contender team. So how do the Boston Celtics get Kevin Love? How do the Lakers get Kevin Love? How do the Suns get Kevin Love without giving up something that they probably think is more important? I think if that's why I was curious when his contract is up, because once he does become a free agent, I think in the end you yeah. get a long list of, of suitors. Everybody's going to be calling this. Yes. Call. Everybody's yes. going to be calling this. Yes. Call. So. I think that's uh hopefully let's let me figure out exactly when that contract is up. Shout out to everybody in the chat that's still here and active and rocking with your boys. We are here at the last pick of the lottery and it's Ochai Abaje. So that's a very good pick. I like that pick a lot. Defensive dude or three and D. Uh compliments Darius Garland. Yeah, it's they had a there's a lot of wings that they could have went. I'm um yeah. I'm hoping that he plays and, and again, this is not a comparison or, or saying this is who he's going to be, but I'm really hoping he can be with Desmond Bain was for the Grizzlies, mm-hmm. just a guy who's going to compliment that point guard, which was Ja. This time it will be Darius Garland. Make outside shots, give you some defensive toughness, and be able to play right away. My comparison was DeAndre Hunter. Come in, knock down shots, run up the ball. And just oh. shoot it. He compliments Trey Young very well. DeAndre Hunter is just so much bigger that defensively he's so much versatile. Because DeAndre Hunter is a six eight wing. This guy Abaji is six five. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he has as the the defensive versatility. Yeah. And I think he's probably going to project to be a much better shot maker on a consistent basis than uh than Hunter than Hunter personally. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I think DeAndre Hunter still got some strides to take as a as a shooter complimenting yeah. Trey Young. But I get what you're saying. As far as compliments in both point guards, for sure. For sure. It's, I just love the other difference between him and, and Hunter is Hunter came in a lot younger. Him and Bain coming in as four-year players ready to play, and they're kind, they have a kind of professionalism about them that you can play them right away. Right away. This is mm-hmm. a champion. Just yeah. won an NCAA champion, played on the Bill Self for four years, played a lot of NBA talent at Kansas, um, and improved every – they showing it now every single year he improved. I love those type of stats, yeah. yes. bro. I love those type of stats. Because that don't mean, like I said, it shows you a hard work, and then that's what the good players do is they work on the game during the off season and then contribute – or like they display it in the next season. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And as a front office, you look at that and you're like, okay, this is a guy that I know – he can consistently come in and get better from me. He's a worker, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's all you want when you're coming into the league. You want a guy that's going to come in and work and not and put his hard head on. Just work. Mm-hmm. This is a dude whose name has been in the draft since he was a freshman. Like, as far as the opportunity to go, getting a little mm-hmm. buzz. The buzz ain't never been this high. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's been able to flirt with it. And the fact that he was willing to go back to school each and every year to get better and better um, just shows how much, uh, how much of a worker he is. The NBA body... I love his size at 6'5", six, six, flirting with 6'6". Six, six. I love uh, how he, when guys are hugging him because they know he's a, such a threat to shoot, he cut back to a real quick. Back, yep. Yep. Beautiful. High IQ guy. And Daler, Darius Garland, bro, last year, he had an amazing year just distributing the ball. Yeah. Yeah, now a lot of those shots that Isaac Okoro wasn't consistently knocking down. He Isaac yeah. Okoro had a game where he was knocking down. I think like he, had, yeah, he did. But those uh, were the games where you'd be like, damn, yeah, Isaac. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you're doing that shit, we're yeah. going to be good. Right, you're uh, <laughs> but now you do have a legitimate option who's going to make you pay. Like, yeah. this this dude was scoring in bunches. Mm-hmm. I don't even need him to do that. But even if he – in certain stretches, if he can, that's the Desmond Bain shit I'm talking about where he's a catch-and-shoot guy, but you also do have the small glimpses yeah. of shit. I'll do it myself here and there. And, man, yeah, I Blake's, think home run pick for uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, man. Yeah. Shout out to them. They've been having a very good rebuild. that's honestly now. Because I think Laurie Markkinen – this game's where Laurie Markkinen is quiet, don't get me wrong, but this time he might sure. have 16, 18, yep. you know, in bunches. So that's two shooters right there for uh, – 
your your main guy. It's nothing better than seeing an organization turn script around from good drafting, good moves, and being patient. And I think the Cavaliers have done that. I remember when people were trying to talk shit about Darius Garland after his rookie year, they remain patient. Um, I told I told people about Con Sexton. I'm still I'm still saying he's a six man, man. No disrespect, <laughs> but I just think that he is so much better when he can just score hunt yeah hunt his shots what they say in the comments uh, and they don't gotta Knicks, be disrespectful too when somebody Knicks, say like Knicks you made your a trade is at the bench you know Knicks, what I'm talking about KB I mean not KB okay uh, Omar our producer saying check the trades so Knicks just traded Kimba to the Pistons Knicks get Jalen Duran for Houston um, for, for the Hornets and a package deal with Kimba to the Pistons so, so Kimba to the Pistons the Knicks but, get Jalen Duran yeah Wait, so wait, wait, wait. who did the Char- who did Charlotte get? Did Charlotte just give up their? I'm sorry, I'm so I'm so sorry, streaming. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to, I'm trying Mike, to, I'm not ignoring you. No, or I'm the trying stream. to get everything. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying, trying to get, get all the details right. for you. That was why he just spilled out right there. So here's the full I heard details. Kemba to the Pistons. Tremendous coup for Detroit. Troy Weaver to land two of his top targets in the trade. Okay, here is what it is. We do not have Jalen Durant. Okay. Let, that let me fully say weird. The Detroit Pistons mm-hmm. have Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey. Okay? And they only gave up a future first round pick. Holy shit. They also, needed a big. The Hornets have Mark Williams now. They drafted him at okay. 15. That makes sense. And the Knicks intend to use the cap space from trading Kimba to pursue Jalen Brunson. Oh, oh, okay. Because um, Sham said the Knicks. It don't matter what Sham said. It don't matter what Sham said. It don't matter what Sham said. He's not with the Knicks. He's not with the Knicks. He's yeah, with no. The Pistons. They got him and then they moved. It, 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 Derek, yeah. it's okay. You, the, you read it wrong, but I just cleared it up. And you're going back and forth. Now you're going to confuse people. At the end of the Bro. day, the Pistons have Jaden Ivey got a and Jalen Durant. Isaiah Stewart is cool, but now you got a a starter, real starting caliber center that you can kind of work on. Bro, Pistons got a year set out for them. Yeah, when you get Ivy and Duran, that's a W. That's literally like the hoes you kind of needed. Well, who are they going to start at power forward now since uh, they got rid of who? Grant? I'm sorry. Uh, the Pistons since they got rid of Grant. Who who think they go for a power forward? Or you think they just move Sadiq, Sadiq. down? Move yeah. Sadiq down? Probably move Sadiq. Who else is on that roster? That they would who cares at this point? Three? Maybe they try Isaiah Stewart. Everybody. I don't know. They think just try Isaiah Stewart. Because he, he was an undersized center. I, yeah. I don't know. Uh... Let's go. Can I ask y'all a question? What's Pause up? this draft for a second. We all, everybody in the world knew Mark Williams was going to the Hornets. Can we be honest? <laughs> so we have to talk about it. Shout out to Mark Williams. Is Jalen Brunson worth all of this? We're doing a lot of moving and shuffling to get his ass. Probably not. Okay. Probably not. It's not um, like he's like a franchise corner piece. He's just kind of like a complimentary guard that you would like to have either coming off your bench or next year a superstar like Luka. Now, let's address something you just said. What's up? Is Jalen Brunson a starting point guard or not? Because you just said off the bench. He's either yes or no. He's either a starter or he's a bench guy. I don't think he's a bona fide starter, no. You? I would say he's a starter. I'm leaning towards starter. I think he proved last year he's a bona fide starter. I think he's a, he. I think he's Fred Van Vliet level. <laughs> oh. I think I think he's emerged kind of like Fred. Yeah. Where Fred, it was a question where it's like, is he a starter bench mm-hmm. backing up Lowry? Then he kind of was like, oh, start. I think this past offseason, or uh, past postseason, yeah. starter. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I asked that question just because we are doing a lot of shuffling, and I don't want to do all of this, and he goes back to the Mavericks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. shit. And that, that was my thing. I was going to say this. <laughs> Because you said Jalen Brunson, he might not, for all this, it might not be, you know, all that worth it. But I don't know. I feel like the Knicks are always just pressured to make a move. So this is what gets them to do this type of stuff. Yeah. I, w- I will admit that, I mean, if we do get him, I'll be extremely happy because mm-hmm. I think he fits very, very well with uh, RJ and Julius Damn, and gonna Mitchell. Have, y'all going to have three left handers. Yeah, three lefties. <laughs> um you know, I think that's a really that's a really good team to me. A Thibodeau team with Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, Quentin Grimes. Somebody got to take another step. Emmanuel quickly over top, and somebody has to take another step. But uh, and I got a prediction for y'all. What's up? The Knicks have a second round pick. I guarantee, I love that second round pick. 
I guarantee I know you will. we just smash it. That's just what we do. We are so good late in the draft. I'm talking. I've named them Emmanuel quickly. Mitchell Robinson is a starting center that we put, picked in the second round. Literally, we picked Kevin Knox seven and then Mitchell Robinson later. And nobody talks about Kevin Knox no more. They talk about the second round pick. Yeah. Uh, we got Quentin Grimes. Quentin, every team that's trying to trade with the Knicks is asking for Quentin Grimes. I don't blame him. Like... We do super good in the back end of the draft. Frank mm-hmm. Nielakina, nah. Kevin Knox, nah. Lottery picks. What was, uh, Who needs Frank those? Drafted at like, uh, what was he? Uh, I think he was uh, eight. I was going to say eight. 11, but that was his number one. <laughs> that was yeah. his number one. Atlanta is focused on A.J. Green. So I guess they, t- I mean, A.J. Griffin. So I guess that's who uh, they take him. That's that, ain't that what you said? They just use big words to set a saying they're taking him. Yeah, Atlanta is focused yeah, on A.J. D- Griffin. Yeah, Somebody they get said. you ready. Somebody said the ESPN is confused on a trade as well. <laughs> that should, bro, that's be the worst thing. Is the, the trades be having so many complications. You be like, bro, who went where? Hey, my, my homie Josh H., producer for uh, House of Highlights, just texted me. He was saying the, flat, the chat was flaming us for not knowing a trade. This is what I want y'all to understand. We are trying to entertain y'all. <laughs> while having an element of surprise so we're not <laughs> locked in on Twitter because they're going to spoil every pick seven minutes before they come so because of that we're also watching the draft in a very different way than we are used to because you know what I mean so we don't we're not knowing everything but from here on out since it's post lottery I'm on Twitter I'm <laughs> tuned in since y'all want to talk shit <laughs> the element of surprise is now gone for y'all Damn. so shout out to they been taking Ace. forever anyway to announce it. They do, which is why people watch here. You know what I mean? Like I've been hearing it a lot. Like people do not like the way that the draft is televised because it takes all day. Mm-hmm. That you have people who works for your company while you're airing it, who is spoiling the picks <laughs> nine minutes before <laughs> it happens. I'm talking about we got guys in the green. AJ Griffin is in the green room right now, knowing ten minutes before he's on stage that he's picked. We it gets to the point during the draft where it'd be three picks ahead. Yeah, yeah you feel me? That you don't even want to. You can't even watch it. Naturally. And I hate to sound like an old head because I'm only 27. But when I grew up watching the draft, bro, I had no idea what was gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Besides, like when LeBron was number one. But after that, it's like, oh shit, if they take a D way, oh, oh, the Bulls got Heinrich. Oh, it was never like this. This is outrageous. AJ Griffin, like. No, there's no surprise. <laughs> there's no surprise at all. And it, it's just crazy. But, yeah, I think this is a steal for them. At 16, I, in none of my mocks did I have this guy being available at 16. Yeah, it's because the way he shoots the ball, I think some team would have picked him up. Yes. Yeah. Every team could use him or uh, floor space and everything like that. But I'm interested to see what the Hawks do. They always have this problem of having too many guard, like shooting guards, wings. sites, wings to give minutes to. But – I mean, he's going to find – as long as you can shoot, you're going to find a way on the floor. Yeah, especially when you're playing with Trey Young. It's, he's just going to create so many open shots for him. So, Knicks are uh, now projected to generate $18 million in cap space after getting off Kemba in the 11th overall pick. $16 million is more realistic when keeping Mitchell Robinson's cap hold in mind. They can resign him after. They're much closer to having enough cap space for Jalen Brunson. So that's just a little insight there. The Knicks figure to make at least one more move to continue. The move, I'm guessing, is to trade Alec Burks. It doesn't say here right here in his little write-up, but I'm yeah. guessing Alec Burks is the guy but who just I'm came team, off And foot. I hear, like, Alec Burks is on the move. He just I, came off foot, in, foot surgery, which makes me a little weary, but I'm hoping somebody still, you know what I mean? It's just hey, foot surgery. As a person that watches like, like, a lot of basketball, I would Alec take Burks. Alec yes. Burks. Yeah. Dude yes. could be 15 yes. points Everywhere real he goes, quick. he hoops He's, his yeah. ass. He could up. be 15 yeah. points real Quick. He, he just didn't get to show it with the Knicks because we didn't make the playoffs this year. But I remember when he was with the Warriors. I remember when he was with the Sixers. Alec Burks does his thing thing when he get a chain chance. Yeah, if you got Alex Burks coming off your bench, you're doing pretty decent. And I'm also getting work. Uh-huh. <laughs> Damn, I feel like I'm out the loop. Okay. Like it's a presidential call right here. And we sure about that. All right. Okay. So, yeah, with a 17th overall pick, I'm hearing that Tari Eason, the Rockets, is taking. <laughs> I got my draft insider. Okay. I'm friends with a lot of different agents. Tari Eason's agency just hit me up to let me know that he will be going 17th to the Houston Rockets. Um, Tari Eason, I, I, I like Tari Eason. Not to, not to cut it off on A.J. Griffin. Uh, not to get his camera camera time short. But, yeah, so the Rockets are, are going to be walking, <laughs> walking out of the draft with Jabari. Tari Eason, and they have another pick at 26. 
The the Rockets, if, if y'all remember, they were winners last year. They got Shangoon, Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, uh, Garaba. Now this year, Jabari Smith, Tari Eason, they needed wing help. Mm-hmm. And then they have the 26. They could be winners again this year. How y'all feeling about Tari Eason with Jabari Smith so far for the Rockets draft? I think you got two very good defensive players that's coming in for you that can help. Tari Eason is a guy that never gives up on a play. Um, he's always making extra efforts. He's helping the helper. Uh, I, I like him. I think he's also a guy that needs to improve his ball in a little bit. He's a guy that always goes right. He will not put the ball in his yes. left hand at all. And that could be an issue when you look at the NBA level. Guys, you have to be somewhat able to use both hands. Um, so that's my issue. That's my thing. Um, I like because they just, you know, they bring in thighs with, with Smith and, and Tari Eason because – I don't. I'm trying to think. They got so they they moved Christian Wood. They had Jay Sean Tate, who's playing like power forward at six four six five. He's kind of like the same thing. So you bring in some more size to complement your your main guys. I think I think that just works out. Um, they're just kind of taking what the cards are dealt to him. You know. Yeah. Tari Eason is is a grown man, but I I, I do agree with uh, Derek man. Tari Eason do not go left at all. <laughs> he still has some raw ability. Um, I don't like the jump shot. It's so, kind of like so much right sided. Like yeah. so, if you go on, if he's going the left side. He got to kind of got the Lonzo type thing. It yeah. ain't as bad, but it's just like crawl. So I, I don't know. He'll fix a lot of the stuff up. Um, I think when they start to play transition basketball and get stops, it's gonna be an exciting fast break team to have Tari Eason, Jalen Green uh, on the wings, and then you got trailing Jabari Smith Jr., who you can throw it back two for three. It's gonna be nice. Rebuild coming along very, very well, man. I can't wait to see what they do with that last pick at 26. Hopefully somebody like Kennedy Chandler, Ty Ty Washington is available because they need some point guard depth. Yeah, for sure. In case the experiment with uh, Kevin Porter Jr. don't pan out the way that they hope for. Mm-hmm. Um, this is probably going to be one of the more exciting league pass teams. You want to tune in and watch what the Rockets are doing because they not, they, not, they won't be an easy win. They they definitely going to be come out and be competitive. But they will lose a lot of games. For sure. Wrong. For sure. <laughs> I get what you meant. I just hope that with Jabari Smith, the, fl- the space is the floor. Gives, you know, Jalen Green some more just, you know, he's more efficient this year. Mm-hmm. You know, he really gets his rhythm because I think he can score the hell out the ball. Yes. But, you you know, you need space and everything like that. You need a point guard that will get you in your spots and everything. So, for what he's kind of had so far, I hope that, you know, just the spacing alone is going to help him. Yeah, and then after this pick, you know who's on the clock, right? Chicago Bulls. Chicago Bulls, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to do. Uh, somebody said I'm watching you type up this. There. You said what? EJ Liddell's still up there. He is. I wouldn't I'd be, be mad damned if EJ Liddell don't go somewhere and help them right away. Oh, for sure. EJ Liddell's going to go somewhere and plug in right away. Do you have any other guys you're looking at for this Bulls pick? The dream is Nikola Jovic, but I don't think they're taking him. Um, you love no, Nicole. Where, 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 where is, is, where, where Jayden, is I would like Jaden Hardy. What is he doing with the Bulls? Where is his love for Nikola Jokic coming from? He's, just, he's been talking about him a lot, hasn't he? I think he's he he got it, man. I I really like his offensive game, but I also would like Jaden Hardy. I think Jaden Hardy would be really nice with the Bulls. Um, very you ask, it sounds like you asked for some shit the Bulls is not doing. I mean, anything could be a surprise, but from everything that I, I've seen, y'all want some front court help because Vooch is not reliable. Then who, who did y'all have after that? Tony Bradley? Yeah, we deal with that all season. <laughs> they brought in Tristan Thompson. So I'm, I'm, I'm oh, guessing. Oh, yeah, Tristan Thompson. Yeah, was, Tristan Thompson. He was the matchup for Giannis. I'm leaning towards the EJ Liddell over Jaden Hardy and Nikola Jovic, who can't guard me. <laughs> uh, no disrespect because he's going to be a really good player. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, but hey, the, this draft has been very unpredictable. So here it is: the bull is gonna take fucking <laughs> Nikola Jovic. Bro, they, uh, I'd be like, hey, D Mills, you can't say nothing about the Spurs, nothing about the Blade. This is your team. This for your the team, season. yeah. This your team uh, for the season because they drafted exactly who you wanted. I doubt it though. And okay. look, we've talked about Tari Eason being a pick f- ten minutes ago, and he still ain't up here selected. Yeah, Chet Holmgren up there for a minute. My gosh. Chet Holmgren, Shabari Smith. No, Chet was up there for a while. You're talking about when they had that OKC pick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like 10 minutes ago. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. This this why motherfuckers be on their phone. Waiting on Shams. I'm just trying to make- I, I try to be cool about it. I was like, man, I'm going to put Shams and Wojo on just silent for the day. I was going to get it organically. 
I'm just trying to make sure we don't miss none because you know people people was on our ass. Um, e, they finally selected him. They finally selected. He him. said, e. <laughs> "Yeah, he got Tari Easton, man." <laughs> wow. What? Oh, I can, what is there any expectations for the Rockets this season? It's not many expectations. You just want to see development. You want to see mm-hmm. Jalen Green take a step. You want to see Jabari Smith Jr. have a really good rookie year. And you want to see some things that excite you from Tari Eason, whoever they take at 26. And I want to say you hope that you see some extremely big strides from Alpha Ranch and Goon, mm-hmm. seeing that you traded Christian Wood for practically nothing to free up minutes for him in the front court. So uh, I, I guess that that – is what they would be looking for, just some type of direction and some type of growth from the young core that they're putting together. But like Derek said, I'm, not that you don't know this already, but they're probably not going to win a lot of games. Yeah. But if they can be somewhat competitive um, over Coach Silas mm-hmm. and see some growth, that would be good. But if you have like a year where Jabari Smith don't look like the number three pick or yeah. Jalen Green don't take a step in the right direction – you could definitely see yourself being extremely ugly. They, they're putting something together, though, that, like, if next year they get another top pick, they right back in the, in the conversation as far as who's got the best rebuild. You know yeah. what I mean? Honestly, I would just say, have bro, be a fun team. Yeah. I, even last year, I felt like you should have a little bit more hype with your team with Jalen Green and everything. But halfway through the season, I didn't care about Rockets games. No. Like, I mean, Christian Wood was out there, but nobody I was really trying to see. It. Josh Christopher is another dude that I really like for them, but – it's not like I was breaking my back to tune into Rockets games. And, I mean, there's honestly teams that are bad that I'm like, oh, at least they're fun. I yeah. can tune into. They weren't one of those teams. At least for them, they do have good front court play. Now mm-hmm. with Jabari Smith and Shangoon, they got Jalen Green. So they do have, like, three really good corner pieces right here. Now they just got to surround them with great karate play- players like Tarese. They, they just got to fill out the roster. I yeah. think that point guard going to be crucial for them, though. Yeah, they take Even if it's a, back, a backup. They you know? take Deshaun Nix last year. From the G League, of course, picked them up. Didn't get a lot of runs, so I'm definitely interested to see if they'll take somebody like Ty Ty mm-hmm. or Kennedy if they're still available. Uh, this is – we're seeing somebody – I don't know if I'm allowed to say his name. I think I said it already. I don't know. Uh, but best available prospects that they sent showing right here, Ty Ty, Malachi Branham, and EJ Liddell. Which one you think your Bulls take? Uh, or do you still say – EJ Liddell. Okay. I thought they would take EJ Liddell for the front court play. Uh, you could play him at the five with Patrick Williams at the four. Mm. Um, That's one of my comparisons with Tari Eason, Patrick Williams. You know what's funny? I think I had the same comparison. I had Marcus Morris. Patrick Williams. Patrick mode. Williams, yeah. <laughs> hey, Pat, his shit does say Patrick Williams mode. That's funny. <laughs> uh, he just got that grown man body. Not yeah. mode, y'all. Not M-O-L-D. Mode. M-O-D-E. M-O-D. I like mode. that. <laughs> Patrick Williams mode. Whoa! The Bulls is not taking... He just, he ain't, they ain't taking none of those guys. They taking a guy that I like. What position? Guard. Ooh. Do a bunch of different things. Uh, Jaden Hardy. No. Oh. Like point guard, point guard? He's a guard who do a lot of different things. We talked about him earlier. Dalen Terry. Yes. Oh, Dalen. The Chicago what? Bulls. Oh, that shit. Oh. But I'm why be... when they have Lonzo? Is that? Uh, I don't know. He was, Lonzo was Lonzo my concern. Maybe Lonzo they, Lonzo they, Lonzo they, don't, they don't believe in Lonzo's knee. They say every time he ramp it up, that shit start back hurting. So yeah, they talking about the doctors don't even know what that means. Yeah, so <laughs> get Bro, you a good point guard. You know, I like that though, cause y'all just needed size and defense, man. Yeah. Y'all need more size and defense on that wing. With I mean, Zach Levine still there and Demar. You you need people that's gonna step it up on the uh, the defensive end for y'all. It's kind of crazy. They have like four defensive guards: Caruso, Dallin Terry, Io Desumu. But Dalen uh, Terry, he he a guard, but he's damn near like a forward size. Yeah. So because yeah, like Caruso, he's six four. Lonzo is six six, seven, six six. So I mean, y'all got y'all got variety. I just like if y'all have a point of attack dude, Caruso have a uh, combo with like Lonzo, and then you got your wing defenders. That's all y'all really need is just have y'all have it somewhere you could plug and play dudes yeah. defensively. And this probably just means that Kobe White is for sure out somewhere. I don't know what. But Kobe White's probably going to be on the move soon, which I'm not mad at. You're not mad at him? No. Kobe White, he he going to shine somewhere. He could, he could score the ball. Yeah, so. I always felt like he was he's a very good at scoring the ball off the bench. That's He's a very good backup PG. That's And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You can literally make a career out of being a backup PG. Mm-hmm. Make millions. Shit, I, I love to come out the bench and, and go against the second string players. So that ain't nothing about <laughs> I don't feel like that's never really a problem. 
EJ Liddell, man, that shit is crazy. That was a nice. I pick. say EJ Liddell. I don't know why I say him. Uh, that was a nice pick, though, man. So, so another surprise. Yeah, Terry. Surprise. Another surprise. So EJ Liddell falls. Mm-hmm. Um, after the Bulls will be the Minnesota Timberwolves. That Ooh. Nuggets close looking for that. that better, yeah. better for EJ Liddell. Yeah. Um, well, the Timberwolves. I wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't be bad with the Timberwolves either. Who? EJ Liddell. Yeah, they've been shopping for like a big, big center though. Clint Capella, <laughs> yeah. seven footers to put with. Yeah. To put I don't even, and You know who I would like with them? Who? Jaden Hardy. Oh. You could let go of Malik Beasley. He yeah. can just do the same similar type of things, but much less. Much yeah, less. You, less. Get, <laughs> you can get some from Malik Beasley. Uh, much less like, and maybe better. I don't like the Timberwolves going out and getting the center and putting cat. At the I don't floor. either. I want them to get size on the wing. I was hoping yeah. Tari Eason to fall yeah. to them because they. It just feels like they have. Like the small backcourt, Patrick Beverly, D'Angelo Russell, and even Ant Man is only six five. Yeah. And then you have Jaden, Jaden uh, McDaniels, and then Jared they Vanderbilt. Had like Jared Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. I like they need Vanderbilt, more help, honestly. man. They need more help, more size behind those guys because mm-hmm. it's like Josh Okogie. And it's like no, <laughs> no. So yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's they got a lot of options they could do, man. This drafted GM job stuff looks real good and easy on two K, but when you that man in a seat. This is tough. So here it is. The Chicago Bulls are about to select Dalen Terry. A um, couple comparisons I have for him. Alonzo Ball, a little bit of Andre Iguodala, just because he's not a traditional full-on point guard, but he has so much size that he can do a lot of different things on the court. He can mm-hmm. attack the rim. Uh, he can make reads. He loves to play in transition and open floor. Kick ahead's re- resemblance from Lonzo. Shot is a little funky, but it's, it's respectable. And if he continues to take strides in that direction, he'll be even more similar to Lonzo. And I think he can guard one through three. I want to see the biggest Bulls fan we know reaction. And Kenny Beecham. Let's see what he said. Right. I, anytime you get you like, you just said, let's get it. <laughs> He's always going to welcome whoever gets drafted to the Bulls with open hands. It open can't arms. be a streamer, too, right? I think yeah he is yes he is okay so yeah he might have he might just did it real quick his type reaction shit. on yeah. stream but yeah I, anytime there's like a a point forward or a big point guard that has scores around him I always like it like I said with the size you see over the defense they're having you know Zach Levine and Demar running with you can't really have better options you know yeah and, and it's just the energy he just he's one of those guys that just he could bring just so much just with his energy and his contagious ability to attack the offensive glass and just. Be a pest. I'm really concerned with Lonzo Knee, though. Because oh, yeah. it made all the sense in the world for them to go to EJ Liddell. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just feel like also Dale and Terry is just a talent you can't pass up on. But, man, EJ Liddell just. He would have been perfect. Yeah. He would have been perfect. Interesting. Um, Anywhere they gave them a look they ever had. The ability to play, like, small ball five. Yeah, who was the last small ball five? Who was that? Taj Gibson. Right. Yeah, he wasn't. I wouldn't consider he run, him small. He won no stretch until <laughs> they got to New York, but we went to a New York game. He hit two threes. Yeah. Whoever took that over on FanDuel is literally a millionaire right Thibodeau now. Thibodeau used to close out games with Taj Gibson at the five because Boozer was terrible defensively. <laughs> Which I don't blame him. What is Did Pat Bev say something? Oh, what, is, what was that about Pat Bev? I didn't even see it. Oh. I think they're just doing some of the they're accolades. Just talking about the, oh, the accolades they had over the season. I mean, they had it. He, he oh, got, Trey, Memphis is acquiring number 19 pick from uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they are selecting, wow, Wake Forest is Jake LaRavia. That is, oh, bro, I like Jake I LaRavia. like Jake LaRavia, oh, too, I like but him. I did not you know think he was going to I wasn't going that early. Whew, he, you say when you not, like a guy, you got to go. So this is the trade. Oh, the Timberwolves. Woo. Woo, shit. The Timberwolves <laughs> are smart. This is some shit I would do. They got t- picks number 22 and 29. From Memphis, and Memphis gets 19, and that's where they take Jake LaRavia. So, Jaden Hardy falls out of the teens. He's going to either be 20s from now on. Um, and then now Minnesota gets two late lottery, I mean, late first round picks, and Memphis gets a guy that they really like, which I'm always a big component of. If you like a guy, you go and get him, even if the consensus say it's a little too early. But Jake LaRavia feels, feels he not fits that Memphis. much of a stretch. He yeah, he does. Memphis. He's a very good high IQ guy who just shoots the ball. He goes slash. He does, and he's defensive. Defensively, he's versatile. So like, he brings a lot to the table. He's just a high IQ basketball player. He's you know a guy he, that was also there for. You him. know, he kind of reminded me of who? Ooh. A little bit of Chandler Parsons, big ass dude, big ass kind of forward. Can, can make it. a little bit of plays, shoot the ball. Just does a little. Guy has a lot of tools to do a lot of things well. I'm trying uh, to think of another good, like just a guy that just. I'm opening up my files for the, the people handy, that ain't watching. Handy dandy notebook. I forget what <laughs> I had. Dandy files. What I wrote down, my mind is all over the place because of. The, the bullshit 
that I've had to deal with but, yeah. with the Knicks. I didn't even write down a comp for Jake LaRavia. I apologize, Jake. Every player in this draft got a comp besides you, I guess. <laughs> Just him. <laughs> Don't know why, but Jake LaRavia you did not get what I, Chandler Parsons is good. I don't think I don't know if he shoot as good as Chandler Parsons. Mm-hmm. Chandler Parsons was six ten with a, a a burner. Damn, his body used to be six ten with a ratchet. Oh. That's why I thought I thought you because oh. I know you I know you rock with Chandler Parsons. But I think he's just a really good basketball player who does a lot of different things. He can defend. He can shoot. He can go in. Chandler Parsons was never doing no shit like that. Banging with the big boys, and he got a little bit of swag. That's what I like about him with Memphis. Memphis is a team that's young, fun, and they got swag. You got the headband, his arm sleeve. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have a fun white guy mm-hmm. like the Bulls with Alex Caruso. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, nothing better than the the edgy fun. Uh, white where they got game, as Hell they would yeah. say. I, I like what Demille said about the high IQ too. I think that's what they kind of found with Desmond Bain. Yeah, and that's why they liked him so much. You see how he kind of made that little quick shuffle pass. Desmond Bain was uh, uh, leading a lot of the breaks. You know, with John Morant being a guy that's on the wing and stuff like that. So uh, have another wing that can make plays and then also just kind of score and do little things. It's they just get deeper. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, I love the trades though. Keep the trades coming on. Minnesota though, I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah, with two, well, picks. two picks, man. Two and there's picks. some nice dudes still left up yes, on that board. Yes, this is my favorite part of the draft. I feel like this is where every year there's somebody in this twenty to thirty range that really helps somebody. That really, really helps some guys. Uh, Kevin Love is a good Jake Laravia one. This this version of Kevin Love, the current <laughs> Kevin Love, not twenty thirty not rebounds. 20, yeah, 50, like 20, <laughs> 20 and twenty dude on the regular. Um. Yeah, I like Jake LaRavia a lot. So that, that that's gonna be real nice for them. Xavier Tillman is a is a guy that he resembles who they already have on on a on a roster. a um, little bit of Thad Young, maybe even just a tad bit. But yeah, I like I like Jake LaRavia, man. That's a that's a really solid pickup. And they probably didn't want to bring on two rookie contracts and the bodies of two people. Yeah. Uh plus whatever other picks they have um in the second round. So it's a lot lot of lot of bodies to bring. <sighs> Yeah, Those shout Spurs. out to everybody that's still in the in, in the draft. This is where I, I mean in the stream. This is where I can see your boy Nikola Jovic being Going taken right here to the Spurs. He seems like a Spurs guy. They gonna go with the two guys from overseas? Oh no. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I forgot they didn't Hey, for those of you at home that bad. don't know, I always tell Derek, pay attention think before you speak <laughs> before you speak. And he steady does these slip ups. <laughs> Not that it's a big deal. It's just funny. But I um, wanted them to take him. They, right, they didn't take right, 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 right. Do you know who they took? Yeah, uh, Jeremy Sohan, who is yeah. still overseas. He just yeah. played American college basketball, but he's from Poland. Um, but yeah, I, I can see Nikola Jovic going here. Who else did y'all see? I, I want to say Jaden Hardy, but they have so many guards that are six four already. Does mm-hmm. that make any sense? Oh, Malachi Branham is still on the board. Oh yeah, he's definitely a Spurs type dude too. Yeah, Malachi uh, Branham would not be a bad pick for the Spurs. EJ oh, Liddell no. is here. Do they surprise us to take EJ Liddell? I would. After you just got Jeremy Sochan, uh, uh, so it's possible. I don't know. I, you if, said it right if, the first time, Sohan. So yeah. Because the reason I, I correct anybody who I talk to say it wrong <laughs> because says, it makes me say it wrong. <laughs> Blake Wesley is still on the board. I don't think he's a Spurs guy. He plays too much like Lonnie Walker. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. So, but that's the same. That's 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 why I have the same opinion about uh, Jaden Hardy because it's just like it's so they have yeah they say they have a guard log jam yeah they so do. many guards if, if if you're gonna take Hardy what does that say about Josh Primo yeah literally the same type of player <laughs> <laughs> literally you know different, pl- different, well, different players, players different ceiling but they they the same mold the same style they're trying to score the six four guards who's trying to score the rock so you know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, unless they feel like they're trading DeJounte and they want to take Jaden Hardy. That, I mean, that that's just stupid, though. <laughs> <laughs> you find his replacement at pick 20, and I like Jaden Hardy. I think he's way more valuable than pick 20. But I'm not I'm not telling myself I'm finding my guy's replacement at 20. I, I just <laughs> – I would, me personally, I keep – I keep um, DeJounte near and dear to my heart for the Spurs – just for the simple fact, y'all know where DeJounte was picked? Wasn't he picked like damn near? In the, wasn't he in the 20s? 29th. Mm-hmm. When you find a diamond in the rough like that who becomes your, all-star. Franchi- yeah, your franchise all-star. player, all-star, 
historically the youngest person to ever make a defensive team, and he's still on a nice bargaining contract. Ain't like you're paying him $30 million a year with some of these other guys is getting. Like, what are you doing? Those would be some of the most beautiful stories to watch. See, guys. Yeah, yeah. Why do, is there anything he hasn't showed you? He ain't the best three-point shooter, but what is DeJounte not showing you? The first speaker's in. Who do you think it is? I know who it is. I just got a text from an agent. I'm going to go. Malachi Brano. It looked like it was Malachi Brown. <laughs> Malachi Brown is picked here. I, I, hey, it's just too much positive things to say to pass up on a guy like Malachi Branham. And all of my mocks, I had him going way before 20. Mm-hmm. Um, so to be able to get a talent like him here at 20, I think it's hard to pass up on, huh? Yeah, him and DeJounte would be a very good like little backcourt. Be able to come. He could be the scoring guard. DeJounte is like the facilitating defensive guard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very nice little duo, if you ask me. What does this mean? For Lonnie Walker, who I think is entering restricted free agency. Uh, the two you, people I've talked to told me they don't see him return to the Spurs. I feel like it says you got to come out and show you deserve to be here. Sometimes drafting the guy that plays but the same position. he's already in restricted free agency. Oh, he's like, already in he's, it? It's this, not the upcoming season? No, he's oh. in it. Well, that probably means they're probably not going to match it. Yeah, and honestly, I mentioned Devin Vassell earlier. I love Devin Vassell. I'm willing to throw him out there as a two or the three. You know what I'm saying? He's playing defense and he can just shoot the ball. Lonnie Walker, he's had a lot of moments, though. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But uh, I don't Lonnie know. Lonnie Walker's just like a chucker. I feel like Brandon brings a lot more to the table than just And scoring. he can do this. Yeah. Play some defense. Lonnie Walker does his thing when he's engaged, too. I'll give him that. But, yeah, it's just that you have DeJounte, you have Primo, you have Lonnie Walker, um, Devin Vassell, and now – Random, because Devin Vassell is like a two. He's and like a, three. a two three. He's he's but long too. He's like I prefer six, him at the. Eight. I prefer him at the two. And mm-hmm. now it but takes yeah, all like the playmaking three. duty that doesn't have to be all on Dejounte. That Brandon, like that. yeah, Brandon can now come in and also spoon feed Yakuperto. <laughs> you know that's his word. <laughs> spoon feed. <laughs> I ain't even peeped that he slid that in there. It went right over my head. Yeah, um, some spoon feed, and I like his shot making ability too, because that's yeah. one of the weaknesses of Dejounte. Yep. Being able to do this, dip shoulder in, go mm-hmm. over you, boom. They're both mid-range. They both will get into that mid-range, get into their bag in mm-hmm. that area. But he's not afraid to catch, catch and shoot, run off the line, get in there, a pass. Make a pass, too. I, thought I that think was he shot be like shot. 40% on catch and shoot threes. Yeah, you you got to love that if you Spurs because yeah. they, they need outside. This is probably a jump shot right here. Already ready. Ready Do, to do shoot your up. work early, boom. Mm-hmm. Very Chris Middleton-esque form. Just don't have the size. I still throw the Chris Middleton uh, comp out there, but Chris Middleton probably got two inches on him. Probably, I think. Yeah, he's six seven. He just he just like methodical. Yeah, you know he knows what he wants to do. Good pull up. Mm. Yep. Textbook. I like it. Like it. You know what his shot reminds me of? Who? Uh, Jordan Crawford, former NBA player, used to be a bucket getter. Reminds What's up me. with the Spurs and having these mid range killers? Tim Man, Duncan, that's just what they like. Tim but Duncan, Malachi Lamarcus Brandon, Aldridge. Aldridge. it's like he a three level too. score. He's yeah. like a three level score. Demar Derozan. Yeah, Dejounte, Dejounte. Murray. Like they Kawhi always was a mid range killer. Kawhi, his heyday. Kawhi. <laughs> that must be what they teach over there. That must be the thing. And they they hone in on the mid range, the mid range <laughs> game. I always felt like the mid range. If you get dialed in from the mid range, they help you three ball out a little bit too when you're feeling confident. Oh yeah, this draft has uh, got a lot of guys that shoot the mid range jumper. Paolo, Branham, like wow, and Inc- impressive pick for the Nuggets. Um, I'm guessing they took EJ Liddell. No, no, oh, I, I would have been like, I guessed it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, they're going to take Christian Braun out okay. of Kansas. I think that's a really good pick. Mm-hmm. Um, a guy who can do a lot of positive things on the basketball floor. Um, and again, like Jake Laravia, he, he's the the edgy, good basketball white player that I think every fan base loves. <laughs> but you look, I, I, I say that now because of how much love Alex Caruso got from the Lakers, how much he gets from the Bulls. Um, you know, anybody can hoop. Definitely, you know, how, how good you are definitely don't matter your skin color. We know that. But I think the fan paces, they love, they just love those players. And I think uh, Christian Brown is going to be that be that same type of guy. I love his game. Can play without the basketball. Um, really physical and they always – you remember the thing they used to say? They said that they always – the analysts would always say that the white players have sneaky athleticism. Yeah. Yeah. His athleticism is not sneaky. It's there. Christian Brown will shit on your head. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a three-year player. So he coming in already NBA ready. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I like this pick for them. 
Yeah, to get a little bit more size too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just like another dude that can play around yoga. It's not too many players that can't play around yoga, but he has the tools to just, you know, catch and shoot, spot, just run the floor and all those type of things. And they needed size because, I mean, who with MPJ out, Will Barton had to play the three and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Or you have, you know, some veterans that you got you traded for, like Jeff and Jermichael Green and type, type players. But now you bring in another guy. He uh, ain't did his job in a minute. Who? Oh, that chat? That chat probably check blowing chat. up. Yeah, yeah, check that, that chat, chat probably blowing up. Check on that chat, man. Jake LaRavia, Malachi Branham. Uh, DJ Two Down. People are sleeping on Jovich. I, I agree. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, people let's are see. saying. You scrolling past with that. He's scrolling past good long shit. Well, nobody really saying nothing. Nuggets, let's get Jovich. Sorry, y'all ain't get him. <laughs> uh, Mid range was gone for a while, but it's coming back. Yeah. See, he said something that was to what you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ku on top. Yes, another Kansas select. EJ Latell to NY. Somebody said Jovich is scary. <laughs> somebody said I am sleeping. When you say Jovich is, uh, <laughs> somebody said Jovich is a cone on defense. Is that concern you, D Mills? No. Somebody else said half the NBA is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's hard to stay in front of people in the NBA now. Yeah, it is. He said, Nick's got nothing. Somebody said, Jovich at 28. Who has 28? That would be. That's not the Timberwolves, was it? No, the Timberwolves at 29. 28, I think, is the Heat, Miami Heat. Oh. Um, let me give some shots. Man, shout out to 1942 Dogwater. He's real active in here. DJ Two Down is real Dog active. Dogwater is hilarious. <laughs> on uh, name, by Connor the way. is in here. Marcus Quattro, Ill Minds. Uh, Marcus D Quattro. I'm sorry. D Quattro. Hal Wood is in here. Marlo. There you go. Shout out to Marlo. Giant underscore Asian is in here. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading names, man. I'm just reading names. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Thunder Wolves 22. So he must be a Thunder and Timberwolves fan. Um, like Blazer Bulls. Basketball Billy 36 is in here. Who else we got? Pablo. EJ Loves Cowboys. Easy 832. Big Daddy Sween. Trying to give as many shout outs as Big I can. Daddy Sween. Joshua's in here. <laughs> Much love, man. I'm seeing who active. Fat Albert, Jay Harris, Braden Regan. That boy, he giving everybody get a shout yeah, out. Everybody tonight. get a shot. I'm showing love, man. I'm showing love. Somebody, yeah. Somebody said NYC till I die. Big Pete, what's up? Who Sixers going to draft? Sixers coming up at 23. Sixers might draft. You think they go guard? They could go Nikola Jovic, but I, I wouldn't be mad at uh, Marjan Bochamp. They need some wing help. Um, they said, what do the Lakers do at 35? We got to at least finish up the first round before yeah, we start talking about the Lakers. <laughs> um, somebody said EJ to Heat. So let me check out. Make sure we rolling now. Them shout outs got people activated. That's how you do it. Be a little active. He right. got it in his back pocket. Yeah. Sitting on, <laughs> sitting on the chat. He make it he bo- that, butt dialing yeah, people he, and stuff. He farting on the chat. He still ain't said nothing. Give me this, what, man. What people saying shit. You got to so acknowledge what they're saying. Hey, let me get one. To through the wire in Thank Chicago. me. What up? 76 is what we doing. Rockets. Braun on top. For show, for show. I just want to see what happens with he Kyrie. He just dunk somebody right there. <laughs> Minnesota is landing. Auburn seven-footer. Walker Kessler. There's that big that the Minnesota Timberwolves was trying to get. I was hoping that he fell to the Raptors. He well, he gonna be nice next to Cat. I still don't like that. I it, just don't like that. The, I feel like it just sounds weird because you got to think Cat might be at the perimeter trying to play defense. I, I, Shout I don't out know. to the boss man Doug. He said he's spamming in the chat. He said, "Bro, shout me out." Big Tell three nets. Shout out her. to you, man. You asked for yes. shout. You can get it. Another reminder: through the wire merch drop. Just went live two hours ago. A lot of y'all already went up there and bought a lot. We got shirts. We got hoodies. We got different colors and flavors. Very, very different from the first drop. This this, this mm-hmm. volume two drop is crazy. I can't wait till I get my shit. You, we got you know into an argument too, right? with HOH with uh, Sam because he ain't sending the shit. I'm just joking. <laughs> you know what today is, right? What today is? 
Thursday and tomorrow Friday, them paydays. Uh oh, them paydays. Uh-oh. I sure got, got no paid excuse. this morning. I <laughs> only got no excuse. We know them paydays I coming sure up. Got paid this morning, but no, for sure. A lot of y'all have been asking for the through the wire merch. We are so happy with this drop. Real um, record hot. Shout out to you, man. For what? <laughs> what? Yeah, it's his shout birthday. Out. Yeah, uh, uh, shout out. So I gave Oh, uh, we done giving shout outs. We want to see active <laughs> activated. <laughs> I don't want to say we dumb, but we we, we need some. Con- yeah. Tell us how you feel about the merch if you want to shout out. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm activated and I'm on Twitter. So if mm-hmm. you buy anything, always send a screenshot to me because I'm probably the most active on Twitter. But my guys here are 100K active tweets too. right here. Um, huh? You got 100K tweets. You know that? I do. He Damn. does? Damn. 100K <laughs> tweets is what happened. You active though. You active. Uh, yes, I'm very active. So yes, yeah, send me a s- screenshot of your purchase and I always. Support, uh, retweet, and put it back on my timeline, and that's how you know you get your followers. I know, I know how y'all be wanting. Y'all be wanting to get retweeted so you can get a couple mm-hmm. followers. That's how it happens. <laughs> and then once you get it, I want to see pictures of you wearing it, and then I retweet you again. And if I like you enough, and if you nice enough, I might hit you with a follow. Let me see. Let me hear y'all thoughts on this. K move. K move. K move. What's, what's his name? It's like uh, I get it wrong. Got a phone. Can't read. It's, K move S. S. <laughs> it's K move S X X said the, the, the business one. It's just K moves. <laughs> <laughs> what he say? He said K smooth, K move. He added letters. K box. This is one. The first round question mark. This is one. The first. It's round. a close call, but for. I, I would give them a slight edge because they came in with only the fifth and they yeah. walked out with Duran and Ivy. Um. The, the it says Grizzlies, so I don't want you to have confused. I know both of y'all looking like what the hell, but this is the Timberwolves pick. Yep. Do not forget they swapped twenty two and twenty nine for nineteen. Walker Kessler, your boy, who you Derek has a bad habit of calling what Walker Kessler. Max Kessler. <laughs> I have no idea where like Max is coming from because W and M are two different letters, but Derek has an infatuation with calling this man Max. But you did allude to them trying to get somebody that's big to play yep. with Cat. You were saying that for EJ Liddell. They went into a guy who had a great uh, year. Uh, historic year. I think he had 155 blocks on the year. Historic shot block year uh, with four blocks a game. Almost five blocks a game for Mm -hmm. Walker Kessler, which is amazing. And I think that's exactly what the Timberwolves are trying to get. Some rim protection and somebody who can play alongside Cat so he doesn't have to be the back line of the defense. How you like Walker Kessler there? I like him. He brings a lot of defensive effort. When you look at those long-ass arms to be able to protect the basket like that, a 7-2, being able to and look at this. He's guarding. He guards the pick and roll really well. He's what I love be, about how he guards the pick and roll is he's able to guard the handler and, and the roller. Yep. Yes. Because he, he so just long. uses his length, yes. bro. Yeah. He could, he does a good job of just staying uh, vertical. You know, using his arms to make up for a lot of that ground is kind of uh, missing. A yeah. couple of things I do want to see him work on. Because he averaged five blocks a game, he is so, so jumpy at pump fakes and block happy, which has made him foul prone in some games. Um Luckily for him, he gets an extra foul in the NBA instead of five at six. But definitely want to see him pipe down on that um, because of how of how big he is. Yeah. Everything don't have to be a block. There's a he such thing as just without verticality. Yeah, just yeah. He was verticality. Shots without um, right there. What do they call it? Intimidator. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> just being big, you're going to intimidate guys at the rim. You don't have to necessarily go after the swing and block, which is always mm-hmm. going to get you the foul call. Sometimes just stay straight up, which he does a good job of verticality, but the blocks make him block happy. So I want him to tone that down just a little bit. Um, and he shot the hell out of the ball as far as attempts, but he only shot 20%. So something there is is wrong because no coach lets you shoot that much if you can't shoot. So he has to have some shooting touch, and if that right. can open that up. Sense. It's very it take, it's very loaded. It takes so much to just – he has to kind of like yeah. sling that. Shot. Yeah, so. I usually don't mind that type of like a slower, especially if you are big, because most of the time they're not close. You, not <laughs> you have, you know, a pick and pop where you got some room, and those are the ones that – if you're a 50 shooter – Take the second one. Mm-hmm. Don't take the one that's 18 seconds left on the shot clock. Just Look, open. somebody bought some merch and tweeted it to me. There's your retweet. Uh, Jeff. Jeff Guerrero. Be like Jeff. Yes, sir. Shout this out to Jeff. This is the only time where it's okay Jeff to be a got, follower. Jeff got the fly kind, too. That color is so sexy. That's that tan beige Ooh. one. That one for yeah, that nice. That I was, can that tell was, you he going to go back to school. He getting at least 10 numbers first day. 10, that's it? I'm talking. It's gonna be a bad day, okay, you know, because okay, not yeah. everybody be showing up. Okay. They be trying to be cool and stuff, I like that. thinking <laughs> I like they' gonna come the next, the, the second week. 
Shout out to all the supporters too, man. A lot of people were saying they, they bought the shit. I got a lot of people mm -hmm. they was telling, They just sent us in the group chat about some of the numbers that was going for the, the selling. So shout so out to y'all. y'all been going crazy. Um, Philadelphia's on the so clock. Philly just made a trade. Yes, they traded Danny Green and a number 23 pick to the Grizzlies. And they got DeAnthony Melton in return. So, oh, I uh, thought that but the light. Grizzlies are taking your boy at 23, David Roddy. Out of really? Colorado State, yeah. Bro, I didn't know where he was gonna go. You I know, thought he's more second round. It's I, just, I seen nice. a lot where the second round, but I, I bro, hearing somebody who's six seven two sixty, I was like, man, he gonna be my type of dude. A big, a uh, big guy like myself, like he's really good at using his body and everything. And I don't know, bro. It's I don't know if people gonna have him playing center. If he gonna be, you know what, what he ends up being, but he's gonna be able to guard a lot of spots with the size and frame he has. When I was doing a lot of my mock work or just communicating today mm -hmm. specifically over the last couple of days, I was very active on Twitter, just having talk draft with a lot of our fans, mm -hmm. and you know I would say something, and a lot of people be like, "Man, I don't know," and I'm just I kept telling them like, "Man, I'm not here to say it's gonna happen. I'm just giving my opinion." But one thing I would tell people is, do not come into the draft night thinking you know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> David Roddy, Jake Laravia have gone before Jaden Hardy, Marjan Bochamp. Marjan Bochamp, I thought would be taken off the board at, yeah. at some point. I, I wasn't surprised that he would still be here. But definitely not before those, not not some of these guys before him. No, they just take it before EJ Liddell. EJ Liddell yeah. is still on All the right. board here um, in the mid-20s. So that was my point to a lot of people, including myself. One of the first things I said before and after my mocks was I am not here saying that this is how it's going to go. <laughs> I am very aware that it's going to be a lot of misses on my mock. That's why you said this is what Pee Wee would do. Yeah, this is just what Pee Wee would do because it's going to be a <laughs> lot of trades. So many teams had multiple picks. Not very sure if all of these teams going to keep every pick. Uh, just like the Spurs. They already used nine. They already used mm -hmm. 20. And I think the Spurs have another pick at 25 or 20. Yeah, 25. So don't. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the Spurs make a move to move that pick. Um, don't know how many picks they have in the second round. So we'll see. But David Roddy, your boy, like you said, big body. Uh, very curious to see how his game translates to the NBA because he is big and he did a lot of post up <laughs> yeah. stuff. He is big. He reminds I don't me. know how much posting up you're yeah, going to be able to get away with. With Joel Embiid, too? Yeah. yeah. So, so this was a little a weird. But he did pick shoot 40 something percent as catch and shoot spot up guy. So. Mm -hmm. He reminds me of like a dude who played basketball in high school, but he gained a little weight, and now he he uses skill. I think he was like, like man, this dude stuff. Charles Barkley two point type shit. Yeah. <laughs> One of my comparisons for him was PJ Tucker, mm -hmm. okay. um, just because I can see the size, but I also can see his role being more of a spot up guy. Um, not I, having a ball as much. I am so sorry for the viewers, but shout out to us. This is our stream. We do what the hell we want to do. I'm dipping down and going to my notes mm -hmm. just to refresh in my brain. <laughs> I had PJ Tucker. I had Grant Williams. Don't know how. Don't know how much he's going to be of a defender as Grant Williams because Grant Williams defended his ass off this year. Um, and then I also have. George's Niang, who's already a Philadelphia 76er. And then another name that I didn't like, so I just added George's Niang there. But David <laughs> Roddy, man, I knew you was going to like David Roddy because he has a unique game with that size. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that's, that's dope. Yeah, that, the thing that I seen at first was, like, he was so big, and then he bringing the ball up the bringing court. Bringing the ball up, <laughs> making threes. Tapping people on. Okay, yeah. okay, you got to look something I like. I love when a draft is unpredictable, and that's mm -hmm. what we've been getting tonight. Um, so, yeah, DeAnthony Melton is a Philadelphia 76er. Uh, Danny Green, who had that devastating injury in the playoffs, is a Grizzly. And the Grizzlies add David Roddy with the pick they had in 19, which was Jake LaRavia. So they still end up having two first round picks. Well, they flipped. They're very, that was very smart. They flipped up to go higher mm -hmm. at 19 and gave up those two picks, but then got another one right back. Yeah. So they still walk out with two first round picks and they move very good on night from for Anthony Melton. Yes. Very, very good good night for them. It seems like they just went out and got the guys that they had their eyes on. Mm -hmm. And that's that's sometimes what, that's why the draft is unpredictable. Sometimes teams are going to come out and just draft the guys that they want to come in and fit their culture. You know what else we have to talk about, why that's a big thing? What's up? Because the Memphis Grizzlies have shown us that they can draft extremely well. Yes. Brandon Clark was a pick that they got that was a little later than I had projected him to be. Uh, Devin Bain, the Boston Celtics had selected what they traded for to get – Yep. Um, Jaron Jackson, John ja Morant, Dylan Brooks. The Memphis Grizzlies have a good history of the draft selections that they make. So they uh, building it from the ground. Yeah, up. for these guys to be going a little bit earlier than that than we've projected or expected tells 
that Memphis has saw some stuff that they really, really liked in the film and the workout. So I cannot wait to see how they implement these two guys because I definitely like both, especially in these type of roles. I think when you have a player like John Morant and minimizes uh, the responsibility of some of these guys that are going to be coming in. And I think a lot of Zaire Williams was also the pick that they had. I feel like uh, some guys cons in college is due to workload. Yeah. So if you have, if you're not a shot creator, but you're the best player in college, you're forced to probably be a shot creator. Now you come into the NBA, you don't have that responsibility. Your role is a lot more simplified. You're just catching, shooting, doing what you do best at all times, and it makes you a lot more of an impact player um, than doing something that you your yeah. skill set doesn't offer. And that always gives it like you don't have no excuse not to give your all on defense, bro. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. not asking you to do much, but <laughs> knock down shots, and you know don't be taken advantage of on the defensive. Yeah, mm-hmm. like when I read certain scout reports on certain players, when they be like, uh, their biggest weakness is they don't, they're not good at putting the ball on the floor. Then I look at it and be like, you don't want this dude to put the ball on the floor right. that much. You just want him to run off screens and just shoot. Yeah. So in college, yeah, you probably saw him putting the ball on the floor. Motherfuckers just take it from him. In the NBA, he could just shoot. Yeah. yeah. The, the NBA team not going to ask him to do that. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that's what a lot of people ask me what I be looking for when I'm scouting. Those are the things that I I really look at. Translatable skills, even if they're positive. Sometimes you look at a player and you can project what he's going to be asked to do at the next level. Some guys are going to have the freedom to take 13 or 15 shots in college. You look at him and you see where he's placed to go, and you're like, oh, he's going to the Bucks. He's probably not shooting 15 shots for the Bucks. Yeah. And he's probably not having isolation looks. And he's probably not bringing the ball up and doing certain things. that he did. So and then you look and you say, okay, well, he shot 43% off the catch-and-shoot opportunities. He's going to have a lot of those looks with Giannis. He defends the position. Then you're like, okay, I like There's this guy. There's certain parts that he could translate over. Yes. Yep, that's yes. beautiful. Yes. That's why you got to have a well-rounded game. And defense is one thing that will always translate, translate over. And effort. Yes. You, if you're a dude that go out and get five, six offensive rebounds a game, you're going to always get playing time. And speaking of the guy I just talked about falling a little bit, the Milwaukee Bucks select Marjan Bochamp at Beautiful. 24. Yo, guy, yo, Chris Middleton, number two, uh, 2.0. He didn't say Chris Middleton 2.0 for him. Who the hell? Uh, he's saying that for, I think, he's saying Malachi. Oh, Bam Malachi, sure. my bad. But Show even then, I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, no. just, uh, just some shades. No, no, no 2.0 for anybody <laughs> as far as Chris Middleton. No. Chris no. Middleton is an all star. You just don't throw that out no. loosely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Marjan Bochamp, wing depth for them. I like the chain, young man. Um, su- surprising, but the guy that I had for them got taken. So who did you originally have? Christian Brown. Uh, played off. Hey, play off that. Giannis. Look at the emotions. Guard. I love it. Yeah, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. I wouldn't be surprised if they well they took somebody, but I I thought they could have went away where they got like a shot creating type guard. Yeah, yeah. Just Ty Ty was have, there. Just yeah. to have yeah, or either yeah, just to have somebody else. You know, that's able to create, especially if somehow Chris Middleton or Drew Holiday do go down during the season for a little bit of time. You got somebody you can give opportunity to. And that shit carries off to the playoffs when you got that confidence over the course of the season. That has to probably be the goal, you know, that he showed some of that of his in his game with, with the Ignite. Uh, definitely still raw, but they're probably hoping that with reps, opportunity, because they're going to be a good regular season team. Right. He can take strides in the right direction to become a little bit of what you just said. And I think there's some upside with him defensively too with his length and his size and his motor. Um, yeah, these are the type of picks that you want when you're the Milwaukee Bucks. You either want somebody to come in and contribute from day one or you want somebody that can develop in the background while you guys compete um, at a high level. And there he is, Marjan Bochamp. He's, he's, he's getting drafted to a good culture that's led by Giannis Antetokounmpo. So he's going to be forced to work? Yes. Yeah, when, when <laughs> the best player comes in twice a day, it, <laughs> nobody else has an excuse to not come in twice a day. And yeah. he has some good guys to look up to. Uh, Chris Middleton wasn't always a, a glossified name or a highly touted name. He had yeah. to work for what he had. Same thing with Giannis. So, yeah, I, I agree with you, Derek. He's coming into a good culture. I'm trying to make sure that he's still here because – Trades. Yeah, trades <laughs> and everything. So far, so good. Um. Next on the clock is the San Antonio Spurs again, oh, yeah. who already took um, Jeremy Sohan. And then the 20, they took Malachi Brandon. I think they're having a very quietly good draft. I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. if they take Jovic right here. Jovic? Yeah. He, you know that's You guy. said that about four times from 16. <laughs> You've been saying that since the Bulls at 18. I, I'm still, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, he seems like a Spurs guy. 
high IQ coming in, and, and he's like a little project, obviously, because he's young, mm-hmm. has a lot of growing pains. And I feel like he would be really good with Greg Popovich. Yeah, I I would agree. So, um, I think I I since he's already like about to be the third pick in the first round, it's a why not type of thing if you're looking at him. Yeah. I'm just sorry I got got caught up in some of the shot blocks he no, had. Yeah, you good. But um, <laughs> man, this the Spurs have kind of given us curveballs though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though we saw Malachi Brandon was was one of the top players still available, I don't think neither of us said him. Uh, we knew Jeremy Sohan was was available and one of the top guys around that mark. Neither of us said him. So again, here we are saying Nikola Jovic. Um, do they throw us a curveball and just take best Jay, talent available? Jay, Jay Hardy. Hardy. Um, do they try to get some size? EJ Liddell. Um, or did EJ Liddell get drafted? I don't think he's been drafted yet. Yeah, why did I feel like EJ Liddell got picked up? Because he should have been picked up. I'm sorry, man. Do I feel like EJ Liddell Dude, he could have. <laughs> yeah, we, look, we looked at uh. We looked at some highlights from EJ Liddell. So, part yes. of it is like. <laughs> EJ Liddell did get drafted. I don't remember where. <laughs> where did he get drafted? Because we watched him, like, blocking somebody's shot, and we was like, that's the length right there. Go in the chat. I- <laughs> <laughs> Go in the chat. Go in the chat. Go in the chat. Hold on. Because they're going to be delayed, so they might not be. In- they don't know. They're just going to catch on. up. I'm going to say, Amar, don't you got it up there on the stream? Who, is, uh, who did the. Was EJ Liddell drafted? Yeah. I'm talking about prior, like in the prior picks, not for the current pick. I'm gonna just, I'm just. Finna I don't, look I don't think really he's really bad. Quick. We watched EJ Liddell. I feel like we brought they. He's he still, brought he's still on the board. He I feel like drafted. we brought up his highlights, but then they went with uh, oh, that's with what Malachi Bram. No, they Dalen Terry. The Bulls, Dalen Terry, oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't know we was watching some highlights and then he was like, "Oh, they went a different direction." So each of the still, still on the board, yeah. still on the board. This draft has been so long because I remember I was like, "He's still up there." With David Roddy, just got uh, picked up. Mm. Yeah, like David Roddy, I never had David Roddy <laughs> in the first round. Usually the deal. <laughs> so I watched, still up there. Ah, oh, definitely don't go that route, Spurs. Not that he's a bad player, <laughs> but they just have so many guards. Go somewhere, yeah. else, somewhere else. I think this range, though. Any team that does select Ty Ty Washington from here on it's out, this is yes, it's a W, mm-hmm. because Ty Ty Washington is a very productive player, very good player, um, and now I think it's way like this is this is why I had him in my mock. I had mm-hmm. him going thirtieth to the the uh, Nuggets. He could go before that, but the twenty fifth overall pick, the San Antonio Spurs are selecting. Wait on it, Blake Wesley. Oh. And now I got the info. Again, they took Malachi Brenner. Mm-hmm. Now they're taking Blake Wesley. They yeah. have Lonnie Walker. They have Josh Primo. They have DeJounte Murray. They have Devin Vassell. What are the they Spurs? Bet, well, they, I hope they do not trade DeJounte Murray. I feel like they're trying to set But even if up. they do, he's not a point guard. He's like a two. Malachi Brenner ain't a point guard. Not that I know of. Maybe they try to let him be. <laughs> this is the full <laughs> Knicks trade. The draft picks that the Knicks acquired. From OKC in the 11 overall pick trade, we get 2023 protected first round pick via Detroit. We get a 2023 protected first rounder via Washington, and we get a protected first rounder via the Nuggets. Those were all next year. Yes. Okay. See, so I'll just so we have it. five y'all first round it. picks next year. Damn. Damn. Yeah, that's your favorite, right? When the team bring all them picks, <laughs> all the playing time in the world for them. So is it worth it? I don't know because I got to see what they do. They're not bringing in five rookies. <laughs> They're not bringing in five rookies. Yeah, it's gonna be very interesting. Blake Wesley though, Blake Wesley, I like him. Um, has some shot creation ability. Played a very very good uh, freshman year at Notre Dame in the nice ACC. Mid range game. Yeah, mid range pull up is is very good. Kind of kind of similar to Malachi Branham. Yeah. Um, does have some things he has to polish up. But overall, I'm a big fan of Blake Wesley. I'm trying to find one of one of my uh, comparisons I have for him here. Where is Blake Wesley? I have a lot of draft notes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, next year we're gonna do this with a table, like you ESPN said. Like, you, do it. You had uh, you said like a Lonnie Walker type. I want to say I had him like a 
a little bit of like that combo Will Barton type, like hard nose type player. I like that. I have Lance Stevenson, mm-hmm. Shake Milton, and Kevin Porter Jr. So, I like Will Barton though. Lance like Stevenson is very interesting. Yeah, because Lance Stevenson is a guy who's like a shooting guard, but does point guard shit, attacks, yeah. but isn't the greatest attacker, has a pull-up game, but isn't the most efficient. <laughs> yeah. He's just like same Lance thing. Lance Stevenson kind of does a little bit of everything on the court. And I think Blake Wesley is the same type of thing. He yeah. does nothing absolutely great, mm-hmm. but he's not a negative either. And yeah. he's so young that you hope that one of those attributes do become Turns great. Turns some good, yeah. He, uh, um, was he the guy that's uh, like the first freshman or something out of Notre Dame, I think? Uh, was he? First I seen freshman. I seen something where one of these picks he was going to be the first one out of that college that was like maybe the first year. Notre Dame that ain't known for having a bunch. Luke that, Heron, Goldie Notre was a Dame four year was a player. Football team, mm-hmm. um, football school. Don't get it twisted. They got some hoopers though. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry and Grant, Jeremy's brother went there, but he wasn't a freshman. He may be. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. They are a football school for sure. You yeah. are right about that. But uh, they have had some hoopers over the years. He may be their first one. I'm not going to waste my time looking it up. I'm just very interested to. See what happens next. The Houston Rockets are selecting Wendell Moore out of Duke University with the 26th Ooh. pick. This is the type of player I think they needed in their draft. They're winners in the first round for me because now you walk out with Jabari Smith, Tari Eason, and Wendell Moore. reason I like Wendell Moore is because they're, they have a, a roster full of young talent. Jalen Green was uh, a young teenager. Jabari Smith, one and done. Tari Eason, a little bit older. Very youthful team. Um, a lot of isolation guys and guys yeah. who score. Wendell is a Swiss Army knife. Reminds me a lot of like a Josh Hart, a guy that can do a lot of different things. I saw him facilitate at Duke, play with Paulo and those guys, fit in well. I saw him do catch and shoot stuff, pull up jumpers. I saw him defend, defending guards, point guard. Wendell Moore is a winning player, and it was evident and key for the Rockets to get a guy like this. I think he is going to be phenomenal at the NBA level, and I'm surprised a lot of contending playoff teams didn't pick him up. But mm-hmm. I do think those are the two type of teams that I wanted him to go to, either a team that is young and needs somebody. Mm-hmm. You remember the role Josh Hart played for the Lakers? Bro, you know what I was just about to say? Like, what? it don't matter what man you are when you have that type of role where you bring energy. Hey, them boys will feed off that mm-hmm. energy. I don't care what. I don't care if you're the best player for sure. Or you the 12th man. If you're bringing energy on a given night, bro, it's infectious. It and I love the fact more. that Houston just came out here and just got a bunch of defensive guys that could do a little bit of everything on the court. And I think uh, they're still calling it the Mavericks pick, but obviously the Christian Wood trade makes this the Rockets pick for people at home. Um, yeah, just that role that Josh Hart was playing with all of those young Laker guys, mm-hmm. a guy that wasn't afraid to do all of the other things. Because, like I said, you have a bunch of guys who are going to look to score and create their own yep. shot. Who's going to be willing to make the extra pass? Wendell Moore. Who's going to be willing to do the dirty work and crash the glass or guard somebody? Wendell Moore. So he has a little bit of an upperclassman experience as well. Poor little Maverick fan clapping. He has no idea that this is a Houston Rockets pick. I am so <laughs> sorry to him. Um, but, yes. Wendell Moore, man, I, I I like this pick. This is this is a home run draft for the Houston Rockets. Two consecutive years with multiple first round picks and continuing to turn the page into the new era post James yeah, Harden. Yeah, yeah and this. now even when if Jalen Green doesn't take that jump as a playmaker, you now have a guy like Wendell Moore who can also go out and playmake and make guys better around him. Mm-hmm. So that's beautiful for them. Maybe. This is the type of player every winning team has. If yeah. I go through every team that made the playoffs or even was in contention of making the playoffs, every team has this type of guy that does the little things that the stars may not have the energy to do or may be too f- pretty and cute to want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Every team has them, man. I, I, I like to see guys like him get taken huge. Yeah, this is Houston definitely just had a very good offseason. A good draft. Draft, yeah. Very good draft. Next, culture. Miami culture. Heat. Who um, would you like to see? EJ Liddell. Jaden Hardy. They need scoring. They need scoring. I'm not mad at EJ Liddell either. They I need like scoring more than they need anything. I feel like EJ Liddell fits Heat culture. And they're talking about P.J. Tucker might be on the move. He's a guy who can come in. Wow, I am sorry to that Mavericks fan. What happened? Houston is trading Wendell Moore to Dallas. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait! It's too much going on. It's too much going on. Okay, this is what happened. 
First and foremost, I am so sorry. Um, but I'm going to keep it real. Anwar, if you're the producer, you're responsible. If something happens for the stream, we get in trouble for saying names, just point the blame to me. I'll, 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 I'll take accountability. Shams has to get his shit together. <laughs> Shams is reporting shit wrong. He's talking about Houston is sending. No, Houston got the pick from Dallas. They're not sending him to Dallas. The real thing that's happening, this is why you should be in the chat because they would have they helped me, but you're not doing your part. Minnesota acquired the pick from Houston via the Christian Wood trade with Dallas. Shout out to Adrian Wojnarowski. So Minnesota is landing Dukes Wendell Moore. They're getting that wing they, that we oh, were wow. saying that they needed. So Wendell Moore and all of this mess that was created from poor communication from guys who are thirsty as hell to report the pick before it even happens. If you're going to be thirsty and ruin all of the fucking experience, at least be accurate. So shout out to Woj <laughs> for cleaning all this up. Wendell goes to Minnesota. Shams, I know it's a lot to handle, but if you're going to be thirsty, brother, you got to be accurate. It's okay and to be make 15 sure seconds late. Because they are definitely Right, it's dead. okay to be 10 seconds left. 10, 10 <laughs> seconds <laughs> late. Y'all, that's all you're doing? Now he's tweeting again. He, put, he done put out three tweets. This is the first tweet. Houston will pick Wendell Moore at 26. Houston is trading Wendell Moore to Dallas, sources said. Then he switched it up and said Houston via Dallas at 26 will pick My will Wendell spinning. Moore and will trade into. Exactly. My head spinning. At least delete the inaccurate one, man. What they saying? I mean, because I don't like the way you read. <laughs> Talking about what he called a case move. Now I'm giving out shout outs to people who was correcting me. <laughs> Chip 1313, he said, Moore is going to Minnesota. Thank you. Mo Bob, he corrected me. Thank you. Dub Nation next, for sure. Dad Tom, I see you. Respect. Do the Pistons lose Duran or no? Why would the Pistons lose them? Brody, they got them. <laughs> Bro, it's so many yeah. little trades. People getting scared for their team. <laughs> somebody said, yeah. Somebody said, go Heat. What we doing here, Pat? Hey, one thing, Heat fans. Y'all are the most secure people in the world because y'all know Pat Riley ain't making no mistakes. Mm -hmm. Y'all know he not. EJ Liddell, Bryce McGowan, Jaden Hardy, who Nikola Jovich is still on the board. Y'all gonna do something right. That's all you gotta worry about. You can and, just, they, and they're gonna be one of the best teams in the conference. Regardless. You can kick your feet up. Y'all can kick your feet up and be so comfortable. It must feel nice. It must really do feel nice to have no worry about what your team is gonna do. Ty Ty Washington, Kennedy Chandler, two guards still on there. They do at some point going to need a security blanket for Kyle Lowry. I don't know how much trust you have in Gabe Vincent besides him being able to space the floor, but, you know, as a legitimate point guard, not sure how they feel about that situation. Max Christie, one of my boys, is still on the board. I'm waiting for him to uh, get drafted. Man, I love me some Max Christie. So, yeah, Caleb Houston, Jalen Williams, Christian Coloco, Peyton Watson, Justin Lewis, Kendall Brown, John Butler. There's still guys out here. Ryan Rollins. You know what I feel like somebody gonna take that chance on too? Ooh. Gabrielle Prosita. Somebody, yes, somebody gonna be looking at I'm him. I'm hoping it's my Knicks. <laughs> somebody man. gonna be looking at him. I wouldn't even be damn surprised if it was the Heat trying to pull something out their ass. <laughs> you know, they, whoever it is, they gonna get them right in shape, get them ready to go before at this even. point, Jaden Hardy is a steal. For sure. Mm -hmm. I'm and they this. take Nikola Jovic, the Heat. Hey. Finally, your boy is off the board. <laughs> Go ahead. You can talk. I'm gonna let you talk about it. Give me, pull up the chat. Let me see what chat's talking about. Why you? Chat talking about. Why you? You give your spiel on Nikola Jovic. Let's go, H. Are you reading the chat? I'll okay, read, go, read. go ahead, read the chat. I'm gonna get my spiel about Nikola Jovic then. I think Nikola Jovic is a big guard. Uh, very curious to see if they keep him. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to trade him and flip him. Uh, he doesn't strike me as a heater. No, not to me. But. But I feel like I'm heat culture kind of shapes you. When you go there, you gon' you gonna get right, or yeah. either you gonna get your ass out of there. True. So I'm um, just wondering how he gonna get in where he fit in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, they got a lot. They of, are losing PJ Tucker. It seems to be. He yeah. not gonna do what PJ Tucker did though. No, for that's, sure. That's why I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't take EJ Liddell. True. Yeah, that's that's why I thought they would. But take they. Him. They could use that offense, so offense is something they could always, you know, oh, have. Oh, yes. I'm going to keep my ear to the streets and make sure they ain't trading this pick or nothing. Um, it just says they're selecting him on 27th overall. 28th is the Warriors. That's who's 28th, the Warriors. Mm. I think we talked about that earlier. Nikola Jovic. Who do you, you think they go guard uh, or wing? Or you think they Ooh. they could go big man? Honestly, I think you the, said Warriors, the Warriors the Warriors could be a team that I think they look at a big man. I don't think they're gonna go for a big man because they I feel like they believe in James Wiseman and they, 
Well, I don't know. Kev- I don't, I don't know how they feel about James Wiseman anymore. But if you do draft one, you you might as well be like, let's see what James Wiseman got. Unless you're like super blown away by the talents on the board. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the Warriors might just go with the best player available. Oh, that's... <sighs> Damn, Jaden Hart. One of my comps for Jaden Hardy was Jordan Poole. Imagine they get another one. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, I was about to say, Jaden Hardy does seem like that dude that's going to be like in a few years, they're going to be like, why the hell did he get drafted so low? Uh, I got to make a tweet I about I feel this. like that's going to be Nikola Jovic. Okay. I feel like we're going to redraft this and we're going to look at Nikola Jovic and said he should have went like top 10. Who, Nikola Jovic? Yeah. Uh, you can keep that good. one. If you do, I will good. give you all your credit, bro. Hey, hey. I'm, one thing I'm going to say, no guy who has the defensive questions that he has, we look back on and say why he wasn't a top 10 pick. Can you name me a guy that has this, this many? And, I, and I'm a guy that says defense is overrated. Jokic. <laughs> no, I don't think Jokic had. We know what position Jokic guards. He got center. <laughs> what position is this guy who is a 6'10 point I guard who can score? Probably fours, the slow fours. But then in the yeah. film, he gets beat up around him. That's the weird part. Is he has this, the size, but he doesn't have the, the the physique. So a four like PJ Tucker, fuck around will punish him on offensive <laughs> glass. Like move out the way. I do believe and buy into this guy being able to find a way to be a positive player. But to say top ten, that that's you love him. You think he cute? Yeah. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> that's just a bold statement. I don't know about that one. I, I think he's gonna be a good player though. I, I definitely do. I definitely do. Uh, let's see. A, a Warriors fans are saying, let's get another Jordan Poole. I ain't mad at it. <laughs> so I ain't mad at it. Uh, let's see. Curry, Clay, not getting Jovic. Yep, that's pretty they evident. Liddell, the Golden State, I feel like he fits that culture for sure. Damn near. Um, basketball, Bill, 36, you you hit that on the head. Um I don't know. I, I'm like I said. I'm waiting on Max Christie, bro. I feel like teams could just use any team that's trying to contend or like have that shooter. They they gonna be yeah. looking at him, especially with his defensive upside. I think he definitely could bring a lot for them. Any team. Very oh, exciting. Man. End of the draft. I don't like these protections on the Knicks picks. Washington is top fourteen protected. Denver is top fourteen protected. Detroit is top eighteen protected. Detroit, so y'all just getting back in picks. Really? Yeah, D- Detroit is not going to be a top eighteen team. That, that we lose that pick. Washington, maybe they sneak in, and Denver is definitely going to be. So we're going to get Denver's pick. But Washington and Detroit is a question mark in the air. I don't know the protections after that. Sometimes the protections loosen up if they yeah. don't hit the requirements in the first year or two. It just be like straight up outright your pick. We will see, man. We will see. Um, I, I'm just confused that Jaden Hardy is falling like this. Mm-hmm. I like Jaden Hardy a what lot. What was man. the big thing about him? I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've even seen mock drafts where he's going like top ten. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that, but I haven't seen this either. <laughs> yeah, I, damn, they're about to go into the second round. And he ain't even been drafted. Yeah, we so. had 28, and like I wouldn't be mad if the Warriors said, "Hey, just give us the best upside here." Yeah. But at the same time, I also wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors went with a big a Jalen Williams or Christian Coloco or something that we just like, oh, of course, that's the, what the Warriors are doing. Because isn't Kevin Looney up for an extension? Yeah, but I mean. He don't seem like a dude that would be like, who, oh, yeah. I need all that money. You know, he's not leaving. Not no. after that win they, they had. And he's not like he's the man in a max contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll probably be on a nice deal, honestly. Yeah. Because they also had to play pool as well. So I, yep. I, and they and they already got a high ass payroll. So I don't know. But this is like another team like the Bucks, though. Like they gonna be good over the regular court, uh, regular season anyway. They payroll gonna be cool too because they sign it. They only bring it back their guys. Uh-huh. You can go over for your guys. Like you said, the regular they gonna be cool during the regular season. Draymond, my, he not gonna play fucking eighty two games. You know, those- EJ Liddell is still available too. I keep forgetting EJ Liddell is still available. And mm-hmm. with this pick, you know that Lakers pick coming up. We got what we about six, seven picks away from the Lakers. I don't even know if they're gonna keep the, they. They might be a team that immediately. They might keep it because they traded to get it. They take Patrick Baldwin, the the Warriors. Yes, that's that's a dude that they could take a chance on too. Yeah, that's a dude they could definitely take a chance on too. If somehow, you know, he comes out and he's looking like 
he should have been a, a, a lottery pick like he should have been. This is why I love the Warriors. This this is a great pick, man. This is a great pick. He is a guy who, oh, man, he has a very good IQ. He has size, and he has a pure shot. Mm -hmm. We may look back and say, wow. The Warriors have done a good job in the last few years. Wow. Patrick Ball. Do we have Patrick Ball in junior highlights? We don't? Okay, that's fine. Patrick Ball in junior. I just want the people to see some of these shooting strokes. My gosh, he has a lot of pure mix. Mm -hmm. We could probably. He, I think our producer could pull him up. YouTube is right there. We have a lot of pure mix. They probably not going to have it because he ain't make the turner. Turny. <laughs> well, uh, I know there was people saying a lot of concerns about his shooting and stuff like that, but. No. I, Nobody could have said. Oh, about his, his shooting, shooting splits. splits. Yeah, because he's in the one option. Shoot. Yeah. He's not going to be that. Did he have a, like a. A playmaker type point guard too, or was he mostly yeah. looking for his own look? No, it was all him. Who, yeah, was, yeah. His, uh, who was his point guard? Oh, I don't know who his point guard was. But said, what the yeah. hell? I said, did he have a point guard? Because that's said, that's yeah. always gonna help a guy oh. get some better looks and everything no, yeah, like when that. I watched creating. him, it was just like he's just looking to score, and mm -hmm. that's that's all you wanted him to do at that point. But when you go into the Warriors, he's gonna have to be a little bit more. He went to a school that is a mid major. He was a top five recruit, mm -hmm. top ten recruit. Had offers from Duke. All Kentucky turned that down to go play for his dad in a mid-major at UW Milwaukee, and he shouldered all of the offensive <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> and it was either it was show that he's capable of that, yeah, or he's a complimentary guy. So I think he's a complimentary guy. They took too much stock into the percentages and shit mm -hmm. like that because he had he played with no other draft talent. Nobody yeah. else from that school was going to be drafted, um, and he only played like eleven games. He had an injury. Halfway through. So I don't even buy into that, but I take away the positives. What I don't like is the foot speed, but shit, with the Warriors, team defense is taught and preached. Six, I always yeah. be thinking, man, like. Play a lineup where he's the four. I try to think about five. that frame, bro. He's so big. You you got to be at least be able to use your length a little bit if you slow foot it. You know, yeah. just. I feel like a lot of it is just position and IQ, knowing when to be in the right place. You know, yeah. Jay go be on his ass. Exactly. You know, Jay Mongo be on his ass. So he's got good people around him. Got shooters. Obviously, he going to need that space and a lot more, like, weight just off him offensively. Hopefully that gets his numbers up. But, man, for a dude at his size, he can score the damn ball in a multitude of ways. Not even just shooting, but he can pull up, use his size to shoot over you. Got a high release, too. They could even, they might even throw him in some pick and pops. Hey, why not? Some guys you just got to throw in there and just put them in certain situations. To see what happens. Like <laughs> I did it. When I seen that picture, I thought that was me. I thought oh, I, man, you literally thought that was you. I thought that was me. I was like, bro, was we hooping somewhere and they got a picture of me? Who was that? I don't know. I don't know. know. Oh. I don't know. That does kind of look like me. <laughs> that looks just like you, bro. That's the body stuff. You know what this look like? Uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Uh, Memphis is the same. Oh, the Memphis is about to pick. You yeah. know they had be taking two, two, 20 Haiti, years. Haiti. Hey, shout out to Haiti, man. He's a Houston Rockets fan in the chat. Hottie. That's Hottie. Hottie. He's he, a big Hottie. fan of our show. He teed up. He's teed up in the chat because a uh, big night the Houston Rockets. He fan. thought they was getting Paulo, though. I talked <laughs> to him a lot. <laughs> <sighs> is this the last pick for the first round? No. Yes. Uh, I thought this was 30. This is, this is 29. Oh. Okay, we, we got two more for the first round. Ty Ty Washington will go to Houston with the 29th overall pick. Like I said, guard. They will Houston one. take the guard? I like that too. Yeah. Because he's not going to be demanded too much. He he play on and off ball. Yep. Somebody said, I can't watch this any longer. There's no NFL talk. Why would you join the NBA draft? He probably yeah. just wanted some reaction from him. He just got it. <laughs> yeah. Thoughts on Ty Ty Washington? Uh, very exciting. Uh, offensively, he could bring a lot. I think his pick and roll vision is phenomenal. But he's he he might need some work. Um, he might. Yeah, but I well, might. Like, now look at my. I forgot what I said. <laughs> Can I look okay. at my? You go ahead. I I think it's a good pick for them. Yes, at twenty nine. Yeah. yeah, at twenty nine too. And I think like he's not gonna be as a twenty nine pick. He's not. You're not asking too much of him. I think he just needs to come in. Be a high energy guy, facilitate so much, play a little bit of defense, and 
Rock has got a bunch to they got a they got time. They yeah. got time for him to grow and find his role. But man, to get him at 29th is a steal. Yeah, and I feel like his playmaking will be very good for um Jabari Smith Jr., Sangoon, all Josh, those guys. He could Jalen there's a lot of different weapons you could throw at him with the pick and pop, pick and roll. There's a lot of different looks that they get. the Houston Rock is like killing it, bro. I, I'm telling I'm, you, this man. is this is ridiculous. So they didn't get Wendell Moore, they got Ty Ty. So they got yeah. Jabari, Tari Eason, mm-hmm. and Ty Ty Washington. That's a very good draft. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think they fill the holes that they got. Uh, Two years kind of need it. Two yep. years in a row. Mm-hmm. That playmaking responsibility that people saying Jalen Green could take, Ty Ty Washington can now take that. And I think he's in a position where, like, Ty Ty, you're cool with him coming off the bench, say, if you have Kevin Porter Jr. trying yeah. to do the point guard thing. Yeah. Ty Ty Washington could, could steal that spot, yeah. you know, if he plays How well. How long enough. do you run that experiment of that Kevin Porter Jr.? Until the shows that it ain't worth it. <laughs> yeah. uh, or unless Tata come out and he's just dominated. Yeah, he yeah. has to steal it. Take it. At the 29th pick, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves. And who the hell are they about to take? They, bro, they got so many directions, too. Oh, this is for Houston, <laughs> which is Tata Washington. Tata is going to Houston. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, and then we at the last pick. So Jaden Hardy, I don't could be, I don't, yeah, I don't know why they don't why change don't they do it. that. They don't be changing. Jaden so Hardy anymore. could be a, a second, second round, round pick. pick, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy to even think about. This, this dude was so a good. top five lock coming into the year. <laughs> Man, I wonder how he feeling sitting in sitting in that room. Knowing he potentially right because we walk, we watched round. him walk in with the yeah. all white. He with, gonna get he gonna get picked. Yeah, but now nah, he probably got to be thinking like, bro. Yeah, he's a second round pick. The Denver Nuggets are going to select Peyton Watson out of UCLA oh, snap. Um, with the thirtieth pick of the first round, and we now enter the second round. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out before we talk about Peyton Watson as we let Tata uh, go through. Moment. Yeah, um, appreciate everybody that's still here thus far. We know the draft can be extremely long. Um, hope that we're able to give y'all some insight and some some commentary that you've been able to enjoy. Thank you for sticking around with us. Don't forget, if you just joined or you weren't here when we mentioned it, we did just have a through the wire drop earlier today. So make sure you go and check that out. Get you some fire merch. We got hoodies. We got T-shirts. Mm-hmm. I personally think this is our best drop yet, and I oh, think we're sure. only going to get better and better. If I were one of y'all, I would make sure I dive in and get a piece of that history. Um because a lot of people missed the first drop and then came back like, where, where, where it go? Where it go? <laughs> so, yeah, make sure you go show some support, show some love. And, again, anybody that makes a purchase, make sure you screenshot it and tweet it at me. I am Pee Wee the Plug on Twitter. And everybody who's been purchasing and showing me the uh, screenshot, I've been retweeting and showing my love back to. So don't forget that. But, yeah, uh, the, the Oklahoma City Thunder traded 30th overall pick to uh, OKC. I mean, um. Traded for, no, OKC traded this 30th pick to the Nuggets for Jermichael Green. Mm -hmm. So the Nuggets with the 30th pick are selecting freshman wing Peyton Watson, who has a bunch of defensive upside. People love uh, the defensive potential that he shows. A guy who was a top-rated high school player as well, kind of like Jaden Hardy and a few other guys who uh, we thought would be lottery potential picks who kind of fell off. Um, into the later parts of the draft because of under uh, up and down freshman years. I take a little bit of slack off of Peyton Watson because he went to a veteran UCLA team. So they didn't give him the wicker room and opportunity that he probably could have used or, or, or thrive with in the other place. But he did show some defensive energy, a crash to uh, offensive glass, a little bit of playmaking opportunity. He has to really find a way to improve the catch and shoot. He's going to be a 3 and D player, but the catch and shoot three in UCLA was very, very poor. And I think that hurt his stock a lot. So hopefully with some developmental Mm -hmm. minutes, maybe some G League action with the Denver Nuggets, he can hone in on that part of his game. And if that can catch up to his defense, I can see him being a legitimate 3 and D rotational player for a team like the Denver Nuggets down the line. Yeah, I think that's the great part about the G League that Teams can now draft players that they want to build for the future, and they don't have to worry about trying to ro- get their reps and rotations in while also messing up their lineup that they already have. So I think that's great for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you just you add defense, more defense to that Nuggets team. 
Uh, you give Nikola Jokic another weapon or cutter, whatever yep. you want to say like yep. that. And then, yeah, I, the defense is going to be for them because I think they, they need to get more of those transition steal type buckets mm-hmm. and create those type of looks. Get Jokic out in transition some more. So, and Like you said, they, they were missing a lot of size and length on the wing, which we're mm-hmm. seeing in the NBA is becoming a, a top commodity. Yeah, because uh, Aaron Gordon can't do everything. Yeah, Aaron Gordon and Will Barden. It's not ideal. <laughs> so you get a guy like him. Peyton Watson, six seven, long. My comparison, uh, I had uh, Josh Jackson, I had Cam Reddish, and I also had Mo Harkless and Zaire Williams. Long guys, big, but some of the guys I named, the shooting has to catch up. Josh Jackson, he struggled in the NBA so far, finding his role in his footing because of the outside shooting. But the defensive upside, he's shown spurts with different teams. Um, Cam Reddish, he's found a way to find minutes on the court in his two early stops, the Hawks and the Knicks, from the defense. But his shot selection and the, the consistency with his shot hasn't given him the uh, role that I think he's been hoping uh, for. The name you mentioned was Zaire. Zaire shot the ball pretty yeah. well and I think because mm-hmm. he really just stuck to his guns like he would be mm-hmm. camped out in the corner yep. and he took smart shots and that kind of helped his percentages shout out to Peyton Watson I'm glad to see the excitement first round pick that's all you can really ask for mm-hmm. an opportunity um, and it's good It's good to see man it's good to see I, I really am a believer in this kid's game he showed a lot in high school obviously this is a different step from high school basketball to pros but I do believe that with the right development to uh, patience and teachings it's a guy that, that can turn into something. And I think this is Adam Silver wrapping up his part of the first round duties and passing it off um, for the second round. So I'm getting tired of seeing teams give players the hat of the team that they weren't <laughs> drafted I think by. it's because they, the trades aren't technically official. They have to go through processing or whatever part of the game that we don't know in the upper part of uh, NBA. <laughs> but I, I think that's why. You know, I, I can understand how it can be confusing and annoying, but I think that's mm-hmm. – because at least be like when they got the, the team up there that's picking them, they could at least change the team. They'd be having the old team up there, and I could <laughs> see why it'd be confusing too. So is this just – when they do this part, I've never even watched the second round of the draft, if we being completely honest. Oh, you have it? No, I've, I've always just like watched like the first 10 picks, and I just stopped watching. Damn, not even the lottery? <laughs> he just said the first 10. Yeah, damn. <laughs> Shout out to everybody. I'm getting tweets of people showing me the – the, merch. the purchases of the merch. Yeah, once it dropped, my dimensions went crazy. Yeah, shout out to everybody that supported, man. It means so much. I don't think we'll ever uh, be able to find ourselves letting you guys know how much it really means to get the support that you guys show us, but it does mean the world, um, if I'm being honest with you guys. So appreciate all of that. And, yeah, now we're about to start turning the page into the second round. It's going to get extremely interesting because I think it's still some quality guys here. Uh, Max Christie is still on the board. Jaden Hardy. EJ Liddell. Never in a million years that I pr- could have mm-hmm. predicted EJ Liddell. Some, uh, names we talk about. Uh, Max Christie. Max. I said I was cr- Max, Max Christie. Chris Crispy. That Max boy Christie. <laughs> it's a box of Rice Krispies right there. It is. So, uh, Max Christie. Um, players like him. I also had uh, John Butler. Still waiting for him to get drafted. I think he's going to be a nice place, nice piece or, or project for a team, depending on where he goes to. Yeah, Ron Harper Jr., I think, is going to be a very good NBA player. I think he's just going to be a certified scorer because that's what he did in college, and I feel like he could translate that to the NBA, uh, especially on the right team where he can get the proper minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be extremely interesting, man. <sighs> I can't wait for the second round. I cannot wait. There's been a lot of guys in the past – who've been picked in the second round and uh, have made names for themselves. It's crazy how many wings were in this draft. There's so many wings in this draft. Mm-hmm. This is definitely a wing-dominant draft. Uh, that's, that, hey, that's what the NBA is becoming. Wing, wing, wing. wing I, hey, I, I love me some wings, and not the one that's at Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> no, because it's depending on what you do, you see that, like, if you have the bigger frame, you could play maybe three through five or three through five or whatever. If you got a little bit of smaller frame, you could do the the four through two type of thing. So yeah. those are the most versatile players on the floor right now. Yeah, I feel like when you got wing depth, it's just it's a surplus. You always can use wing mm-hmm. depth. When you don't have it, now you're looking at like, damn, what do we really do? We got to now run small guards out. Yeah, and you having small guards out now makes you a liability defensively. So I love this wing movement that we're going on, and it seems like these wings are coming in with mid range game. I mean, they would shoot threes, able to do more than just three and D now. So. Yeah, um, 
thank you guys though. It's 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 a wrap. First round is done. Hope that we were able to give y'all some names to look for in the second round. Um and, and a little bit of insight before we wrapped it up. Yeah. Uh, appreciate y'all. Hope y'all are happy and satisfied with what y'all teams did. I'm just now calming down from the Knicks chaotic mess. Blazer I was trying, to, right I was trying to distract you. I, I knew that Thank was bugging you. I, I was trying to distract it. you a little you. bit. Uh, but me and you got two two picks from our teams in the second round. We about to wrap this up so we can go and uh, see what our team is about to do. But, again, appreciate y'all. Sorry for the technical issues. And we will see you guys next time. Much love. We out. Peace. Peace.